Okay, tonight's topic again. Tonight's topic is called the murderous evil black women. The murderous evil black women. That's tonight's topic. Okay, let's open up with the book of Ecclesiastes. Okay, Ecclesiastes chapter 25, verse 19. Let's start there. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 25, verse 19. Come on. All wickedness is but little to the wickedness of a woman. Mm -hmm. Let the portion of a, of a sinner fall upon her. Read verse 19 again. Come on. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 25, verse 19. Go ahead. All wickedness is but little to the wickedness of a woman. Stop right there. The Lord is teaching us, it says, all wickedness is but little compared to the wickedness of a woman. It says, all the wickedness you can think of upon this earth, the wickedness of a woman, nothing comes to that thing. That's what the Lord is saying, because the Lord knows what he made. The most High God knows what he created. Read the verse again. Come on. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 25, verse 19. Go ahead. All wickedness is but little to the wickedness of a woman. Mm -hmm. Let the portion of a sinner fall upon her. That's why you brothers, you better make sure before you say you want to get married, you better make sure that you prove a sister. Because some sisters, they can hide their demons very well. But because you can be in, the, in simp mode, you will miss the most important stuff. You understand? Watch this. Why is the Lord saying, all wickedness is but little compared to the wickedness of a woman. Watch this. Jump down to verse 24. Come on. Ecclesiastes chapter 25, verse 24. Go ahead. Of the woman came the beginning of sin. Mm -hmm. And through her, we all die. That's why he said what he said. It says, of the woman came the beginning of sin. And through her, the woman, we all die. The reason why you see the 12 tribes of Israel were at the bottom of all nations, guess who's responsible for that thing? The woman. You understand? When she listened to the devil, when she listened to Satan, the black woman listening to Satan, guess what? She's listening to Satan today, the white man. You understand? That's why the biggest stumbling block in this truth to wake our people up, guess who that is? The black woman. Do you understand? She is the white man's watchdog. Because they are the main ones that come against us when we go to the streets and prophesy to wake our people up, to build the nation of Israel, to bring our nation back to glory in the spirit of Christ. Read that again. Verse 24, come on. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 25, verse 24. Read. Of the woman came the beginning of sin. Mm -hmm. And through her, we all die. And through her, we all die. There is no we Listen. The kingdom from the time of Adam, everything was destroyed because of what the woman did. Watch this. Jump up to verse 16. Come on. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 25, verse 16. Read. I had rather dwell with a lion and hmm. a dragon. Come on. Than to, than to keep house with a wicked woman. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, I would rather dwell with the lion. You need to pause right there. And say, wait a minute, just imagine a lion. You understand? A lion, a ferocious lion. You understand? Is says, imagine that fearsome creature, right? And a dragon. You understand? So think about a dragon. Two fearsome animals. One will devour you, will chop your hair off. Another one will be blowing smoke and fire out of his mouth and his nose. The Lord is saying... You understand? Sirach is saying through the prophets of the, the spirit of Christ, he's saying, I'd rather dwell with these two creatures than to keep house with a wicked woman. Mm. I mean, you really have to sit down and really ponder on this thing. Let that sink in. Give me that in Luke 9, verse 44. Let it just sink in a little bit. Let it marinate in your nabi. You understand? Read that. Luke chapter 9, verse 44. Come on. I'm not talking about these righteous sisters up in here. Go ahead. Luke, the, book of Luke, the book of Luke, chapter 9, verse 44. Go ahead. Let these saints sink down into your ears. Stop right there. You see what Charlie said? It says, let these saints sink down into your ears. 
meaning let that sink in. Let that marinate, ponder on this thing. You understand? Give me that in Sarah 22. Okay. Ecclesiastes 22 verse 17. Watch this. The Lord is saying, let that sink in. Okay. We watch God. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 22 verse 17. Read. A heart settled upon a thought of understanding mm -hmm. is a fair plastering on the wall of a gallery. Is a, a heart that is settled upon a thought of understanding. The thought of understanding is this Bible. You understand? Is a but your mind that is settled. When something is settled, that means you are comfortable. You understand? Is as a mind that is settled upon a thought of understanding, meaning the scriptures, the wisdom that are written in this book, is that is as is as a fair plastering on the wall of a gallery. You understand? You're looking at a beautiful painting. You'll be sitting there looking at the detail of the painting. What type of material was used to put the painting together? Because your mind is settled on it. You understand? The Lord is saying you must do the same thing of what we're bringing out. And everything is that's written. But the context of what we're reading, pay attention. Is there's, there's the, all the wickedness on earth is there's nothing compared to what a woman can do. Look where we're at now, at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, read it again, verse 17. Read it. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 22, verse 17. Go ahead. A heart settled upon a thought of understanding mm -hmm. is as a fair plastering on the wall of a gallery. Is there, you see that thing? So the Lord is comparing the mind that is meditating upon what? A thought of understanding. He's comparing it to what? To a man that is looking at a beautiful painting. You understand? Admi admiring the work that has been put in the painting. So he says, likewise, these words, we must meditate upon it. Our minds must be settled upon every godly discourse. That's what he's saying right there. Go back to Sirach 25, verse 16. Again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 25, verse 16. Go ahead. I had rather dwell with a lion and mm -hmm. a dragon Read. than to keep house with a wicked woman. Than to keep house with a wicked woman. Because guess what she will do? She will put you to death. Understand that spiritually and physically. Watch this. Give me Ecclesiastes 7.26. Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Verse 26, watch this. This is some heavy stuff right here. Okay, come on. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 26. Three. And I find more bitter than death. The woman whose heart oh, right there. is... Hold on. It says, I find more bitter than death. It says, I find something that is more bitter than, being, than dying. Is it there's something that is good? Listen, think about it. When you are dead, what are you doing? Nothing. When you are dead, you are not doing nothing. Here he's saying, listen, there's something that is better than death. Something better than death. Hmm. Keep going. Read. The woman whose heart is snares and nets. The woman is that I found something that is, was, is more bitter than death. The woman. He's not talking about all women. He's going to describe the type of woman he's talking about. He says, who's what? Whose heart is snare and net. Meaning what? Her path is the way to hell and death. That's what the Lord is saying right here. Go ahead. And her hands as bands. And her hands as bands. Meaning what? When she catches you, you're gone. You're done. You're finished. Go ahead. Whoso pleases God shall escape from her. Whoso pleases the Lord will escape from this woman. If you please the Lord, if you want to please the most High God, the most High God is teaching is you better escape from this type of woman. But watch the next part of that verse. Go ahead. But the sinner shall be taken by her. But the sinner will be taken by her. But the sinner, the sinner, the sinner will be taken by this type of woman. You understand? That's why you brothers, you better make sure that when you prove, you use the Bible to prove the sister to examine every little thing. You understand? Don't my, your mind must not be on the box. Your mind must be on the laws of the Most High God, so that you can have the looking glass. You can look at it through the looking glass, which is the Bible. Why? Because you are preparing for marriage. 
because marriage is not a game. It's not a joke. You understand? So, and, and I see a lot of you brothers, you are very, very naive. You understand? You simple as hell. You understand? You're not watching. You understand? You barely. So you overlooking stuff. You understand? Simple activity. Read that thing again. The, the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 26. Read. And I find more bitter than death. Mm -hmm. the, the woman whose heart is, is snares and nets, and her hands as bands. Read. Whoso pleaseth God shall escape from her, but the sinner shall be taken by her. Man, watch this. Let's give an example. Give me First Timothy 2 verse 13. Let's give some examples. Okay, First Timothy chapter 2 verse 13. Because what we're reading here, the reason why he's saying, so that because I know some of you might have forgotten already, go back to Sarah 25 verse 24. Okay, Sarah 25 verse 24. And then I'll give an example in Timothy. Read that. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 25, verse 24. Read. Of the woman came the beginning of sin. Mm -hmm. And through her, we all die. And through her, we all die. It says, of the woman came the beginning of sin. Meaning sin entered into the world through the woman, and through her, we all die. Now give me First Timothy 2, verse 13. Let's get some examples, okay? The apostle Paul is keep reminding us that so that we can watch and use the scriptures of old so that we learn today in these last days. You understand? We don't repeat the same mistakes that happened back then in Genesis. That's why the Apostle Paul keep repeating these things in the spirit of Christ. So we learn with that. You know what? Give me, uh, give me, hold on. Give me Romans 15 verse 4. Romans chapter 15 verse 4. Okay, because we keep repeating, we keep reminding us that we must what? We must be awake with it. Of Romans chapter 15, verse 4. Come on. For whatsoever things were written aforetime mm -hmm. were written for our learning. They were what? Were written for our learning. The things that were written in the past, they were written for us to learn from. They were written for our learning. Go ahead. That we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. You see what he's saying? That we, through patience, because patience is necessary. You have to have patience in order for you to be able to investigate thoroughly. Be a good detective. You understand? Give me that in Sarah 20 verse 32. The most that God is teaching us, giving us the sense. But as long as your mind is on the coochie and the booty, you're going to miss stuff. Okay? We were to go. Come on. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 20, verse 32. Wait. Necessary patience in seeking what? the Lord. Necessary patience. Necessary in seeking patience. The Lord. Necessary patience. So patience is necessary when seeking the Lord. You have to have patience and it's necessary. It's a necessity. What is that telling you? It is a law. It's a law to be patient. It's a commandment. You have to be patient when you seek the most like God. You understand? Go ahead. It's better than he that leadeth his life without a guide. You living your life, you living your life without a guide, meaning without counsel. Guess what? You're gonna lose patience because if you don't, re if you reject the counsel or you don't take, you don't be, you are not patient enough to let the counsel that you was given to take, to take, um, to take, um, you know, to take effect in your life. Guess what? Of course, you are living your life without a guide, meaning you're rejecting the counsel of the Lord that's written. That means the words have not sunk, have not have not sunk in your spirit. You understand? That's what the Lord is teaching us right here. Now, go back to where it was at. Okay. Romans 15 verse 4. Again. The book of Romans chapter 15 verse 4. Read. For whatsoever things were written aforetime mm -hmm. were written for our learning. They were what? Were written for our learning. They were written for us to learn from. Go ahead. That we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. That we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Because your, your patience is in the scriptures. You're going to read the scriptures to see how our forefathers dealt with that. 
then the, that's, that's where you're going to get your comfort from. That's how you're going to be comforted. But watch this. Give me the book of Proverbs, okay? Give me the book of Proverbs. Give me Proverbs chapter, give me Proverbs chapter five, okay? Give me Proverbs chapter five and verse, verse 19, watch this. Because remember what we read, we read in, 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 in Romans 15, it says that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope, right? Because a lot of the times brothers are comforted by what? They are comforted by seeing the sister shape, how the sister looks, she's got a pretty face, she is, um, she, you know, she's shaped in all the right places and all that. That, that comforts a, a simple Negro. That comforts a simp. A simp is comforted by that. A simp is driven by that. But watch this. You see, don't be doing this. Give me that in the Proverbs 5. Read verse, hmm, read verse 15. Then we're going to jump. Watch this. The book of Proverbs chapter 5, verse 15. Mm -hmm. Drink waters out of thine own cistern. Read. And running waters out of thine own well. He says, so what the Lord is saying, he says, he says, waters out of their own, their, their own system. He talk about your own people. Watch this. Now, jump down to verse 19. Hmm. Watch this. The book of Proverbs, chapter 5, verse 19. Read. Let her be as the loving hind and hmm. pleasant roe. He says, let her. The hair is the woman, but guess what? He talk about wisdom. You understand? This is talking about wisdom. So don't be comforted by reading this thinking. It's, talking, it's actually talking about an, a sister. Then you use this and no, brother, me, I'm comforted by her breast and all that. You simple as hell. Read that thing again, verse 19. Watch this. The book of Proverbs chapter 5, verse 19. Go ahead. Let her be as the loving hind and pleasant roe. Mm. Let her breasts satisfy thee at all times. Go ahead. And be thou ravished always with her love. You talk about wisdom. Then you talk about wisdom. You understand? So wisdom is what's supposed to comfort you. Wisdom is what's supposed to satisfy you. But don't be comforted by looking at a sister and you get blinded by your lust. You understand? Now, give me First Timothy 2. First Timothy 2 verse 13. The things that were written aforetime time were written for us to learn from. You understand? That we, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. First Timothy 2 verse 13. Watch this. Remember what we read in Sirach 25 verse 24? You understand? Read. First book of Timothy chapter 2 verse 13. Go ahead. For Adam was first formed. Mm -hmm. Then Eve. He says because Adam was first formed, then Eve. Adam was created first, then Eve came after, out of Adam. You understand? Read. And Adam was not deceived. You see that part right there? And Adam was not deceived. You see that? Adam was not deceived. Read. But the woman being deceived was in the transgression. But the woman being deceived was in the transgression. But the woman being deceived was in the transgression. So the reason why, go back to Sarah 25 verse, 9, verse 24 again. Okay, read, read 19 and 24 together. Sarah 25 verse 19 and 24. Read that. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 25 verse 19. Go ahead. All wickedness is but little to the wickedness of a woman. Read. Let the portion of a sinner fall upon her. So all wickedness is little compared to the wickedness of a woman. Jump down to verse 24 now. Come on. Verse 24. Mm -hmm. Of the woman came the beginning of sin. Read. And through her, we all die. So now Siraki is saying the same thing that the apostle Paul is saying. That Aram was not deceived. Go back to 1 Timothy 2 verse 14. Aram was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. The woman being deceived, not Adam, but the woman. Read that. First Timothy 2, verse 14. First book of Timothy, chapter 2, verse 14. Go ahead. And Adam was not deceived. Mm -hmm. But the woman being deceived was in the transgression. But the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Give me First Peter 3, verse 7. 
Because the reason why the serpent did not go to Adam because Adam was a god on earth. You understand? He is the head. So the serpent went to Eve because the serpent was able to identify the rebellion in Eve. You understand? That's why he went to her. But there's another reason why the serpent went to Eve and not Adam. Read that. First Peter 3 verse 7. Come on. First book of Peter chapter 3 verse 7. Come on. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, mm -hmm. giving honor unto the wife Read. as unto the weaker vessel. Stop right there. You see that? It says giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel because she's the weaker vessel. You understand? That's why she needs a hedge over her head so that that position does not get spoiled. You understand? Read. And as being heirs together of the grace of life. Eternal life, read. That your prayers be not hindered. So now, watch this. Give me the book of Sirach. You understand? Know, before we get Sirach, let's go back to 2 Timothy 2, verse, 4, verse 14 again. Okay? Because we want to explain here, the Apostle Peter is explaining to us that the woman is the weaker vessel. It doesn't mean she's insignificant. No, she's, in, she's necessary. You understand? She's important. But the Lord is telling us that she's the weaker verse. Okay, watch this. First Timothy 2, verse 14 again. First book of Timothy, chapter 2, verse 14. Read. And Adam was not deceived. Mm -hmm. But the woman being deceived was in the transgression. But the woman being deceived was in the transgression because why? She is the weaker vessel. Now let's get some example. Give me Genesis 3 verse 1. Genesis chapter 3 verse 1. We're still dealing with the wickedness of a woman. You're going to see how the class progresses. You understand? You understand? So pay attention. Read what you got. Genesis 3 verse 1. Read there. The book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 1. Go ahead. Now the serpent was most subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he, he said, and yea, eat of every tree of the garden. Okay, read verse 1 again. Genesis chapter 3 verse 1. Let's read that again. Wait. The book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 1. Now Wait. the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which mm -hmm. the Lord God hath made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. So now it says the serpent was more subtle than any beast. The serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. Watch this. Give me that in uh, Ecclesiastes 3 verse 18. Okay, he says the serpent was more subtle than any beast, any beast, any beast. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 18. Read that. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 18. Come on. I said in my heart concerning the estate of the sons of man. Read. That God might manifest them and that they might see that they themselves are beasts. That they themselves are beasts. So the estate of the sons of men, the sons of men, that they might see that they themselves are beasts. So the serpent was not a snake. It was man. Go back to Genesis 3 verse 1 now again. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. Read. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God hath made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. So now the serpent is saying to the woman, And God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Go ahead. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. You see what the woman said? That means the woman knew already, you understand, based on the teachings that Adam taught her. Because Adam taught Eve the laws of God. That's why she was able to respond the way she did here. Read verse 2 again. Genesis chapter 3 verse 2. And the woman said unto the serpent, 
we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Mm -hmm. We may eat of the fruit. We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. We may eat because why? Because how did she know? Because Adam taught her the laws of God. Give me that in. Um, let's go to Genesis two. Okay. You know what? I'm jumping ahead. Give me second Ezra three verse five. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use that one. Second Ezra three verse five. Read five and seven. Second book of Esther, chapter three, verse five. You know what? Hold that. Hold that. Give me second Ezra fifteen, verse fifty one. Okay. Second Ezra fifteen, verse fifty one. Let's read that. Second book of Esther, chapter sixteen, verse sixty one. Read. And thou shalt be cut no, no. down 16. by. Them Hold on. Wait. As second double. Ezra. Second Ezra chapter 16, verse 61. Let's read that. Second book of Esther chapter 16, verse 61. Read. Right. He made man and put his heart in the midst of the body mm -hmm. and gave him breath, life, and understanding. You see what happened? This is what the Lord did, gave to Adam. He made Adam, and guess what? He says he put his heart in, his, in the midst of his body, in the body and gave him breath, Life and understanding. That is what was given to Adam. Give me Proverbs 3 verse 22. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 22. Let's read that. The book of Proverbs chapter 3 verse 22. Read. So shall they be life unto thy soul mm -hmm. and grace to thy neck. Read that again. The book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verse 22. Mm -hmm. So shall they be life unto thy soul and grace to thy neck. So the day that shall be life to thy soul and grace to thy neck is what? Jump up to verse 21. Read that. Verse 21. Mm -hmm. My son, let not them depart from thine eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. You see that thing? The, the sound the wisdom the sound wisdom and discretion is that the, is what is the life that shall is the, is the what is the life that shall be to your soul and the grace that shall be to your neck is talk about God's commandment this is what was given to Adam okay now watch this now give me second as three second as three verse five now that we know that Adam was given the commandment he was given the laws wisdom knowledge and understanding guess what Read that. Second Ezra 3. Read the story. Let's get to the point. Read that. Second book of Esther, chapter 3, verse 7. Go ahead. And unto him thou gave us commandment to love thy way. You see that part right there? Unto him. The him is Adam. Adam was given commandment to love the ways of the Lord. Read on. Which he transgressed. Through him. Read. And immediately thou appointest death in him. Mm -hmm. And in his generations, of whom came nations, tribes, peoples, and kindreds out of number. Read on, next verse, come on. And every people walked after their own will. Every people did what? Walked after their own will. And every people walked after, walked after their own will. Because Adam's job was to teach Eve and everybody. Go ahead. And did wonderful things before thee. Mm -hmm. And despised thy commandments. And despised thy what? And despised thy commandments. And they despised the commandments of the Most High God. Because Adam was given a job to teach. He, first and foremost, our foremother and everybody else. You understand? Now, go back to Genesis chapter 3 now. Verse 2 again. Genesis 3 verse 2. The book of Genesis, chapter 3, verse 2. Read. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. How did she know? Because Adam taught her the laws. Read on. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. 
So now I want to deal with verse 2 just for a moment. You understand? It says, And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the seed of the garden. Why did she say that? Give that in Genesis 1, verse 11. You understand? This is talking about actual trees during the creation account. It's talking about actual trees and actual fruits. Watch this. Read that. Genesis 1, verse 11. The book this of is Genesis. on the third day. Okay, this is on the third day. Watch this. Read that. The book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 11. Read. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree, yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. You see what you see what happened? This is the third day now. You understand? On the third day, it says, let the earth bring forth grass, the earth yielding seed, the fruit tree yielding fruit after his his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. Go ahead, next verse. Come on. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind, and God saw that it was good. God saw that it was good. This is on the third day. You understand? So what's happening is that in Genesis 3 verse 2, Eve is talking about actual trees. Now jump down to verse 29. The book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 29. Read. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. To you it shall be for meat, meaning you may freely eat. You can eat that. That's why Eve said what she said, because that's when the Lord gave us what diet. But the diet comes from the creation account of the third day of creation. You understand? Go back to Genesis 3 now, verse 2 again. Genesis chapter 3, verse 2. Mm -hmm. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Because of what? Because of the, what we read in Genesis 1, 11 and 12 and verse 29. You understand? The apples, bananas, oranges and so forth. We may eat that. Because that, that was our diet. Now read the next verse. Come on. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God had said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And that is a part of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Because Adam, I mean, the most High God wasn't talking to Eve. He was talking to, he taught Adam directly. And Adam taught his wife. You understand? So uh, Eve is repeating something that was taught to Adam. You understand? The proof of that is in Genesis chapter 2. Okay, Genesis 2 verse 17. Read that. The book of Genesis chapter 2, 2 verse 17. You know what? Start of verse But of the the book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 16. Go ahead. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, mm -hmm. Of every tree of the garden thou mayest, mayest freely eat. You may freely eat. That's the same thing that Eve repeated to the serpent. You may freely eat. Go ahead. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. You see that thing? She's repeating the same thing that Adam, Adam said. You understand? She's repeating the same thing that was taught to Adam. So the proof that, that the proof what we're reading is that in chapter 3, what everything that Eve is saying is what Adam taught her. You understand? And now she's repeating the same thing to the serpent. Like she's complaining to the serpent. You understand? Watch this. Read verse 17 again. Genesis 2. The book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 17. Mm -hmm. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. He says, but, the, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, 
thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest the worm, thou shalt surely die. So this tree here is making, it says the tree of knowledge of good and evil. This particular tree, it says don't get any, don't go and learn from this particular tree. Give me that in Mark 8, 24. You see that the Lord is saying, listen, of this particular tree, the, the, this particular tree, you must not learn anything from this particular tree. That's the same thing that he is saying to the serpent. Watch this. Give me that in Mark 8, 24. The book of Mark, chapter 8, verse 24. Read. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. I see men as trees walking. Is it this particular? Don't learn, don't learn nothing from this particular tree. You understand? Don't learn anything from this particular tree. Because if you learn it, you're going to die. You will surely die. Meaning it's a fact. There's no evil maybe about it. He says, when you do it, you will surely die. Now, go back to, um, watch this. Give me that thing. Go back to Genesis 3. Okay, Genesis chapter 3. Read verse 4 now. The book of Genesis chapter 3, verse 4. Read. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. You shall not surely die. Meaning what? Whatever Adam told you, that's a lie. Go ahead. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, mm -hmm. then your eyes shall be opened. And ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You see what the serpent is saying to Eve is that for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, meaning you learn from this particular tree, then your eyes shall be opened. And we shall be as God, knowing good and evil. You shall be as God, as God. Because what is he telling? What is the serpent telling Eve? The serpent is saying something that he knows about Adam. That's why he says, You shall be as God, knowing good and evil. You're going to be just like your husband. That's what the serpent is telling Eve here. Watch this. Give me that in Psalm 32, verse 6. Okay, because Adam was already on that God level. Adam was already on the God level. Watch this. Psalm 32 verse 6. The book of Psalms, chapter 82, verse 6. Read. I have said, ye are gods, mm -hmm. and all of you are children of the Most High. He says, I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. So Aram was a god on earth. You understand? Aram was a god on earth. And guess what? The serpent is telling, is deceiving Eve, saying, listen, if you learn from this particular tree, meaning himself, you shall be, your eyes are going to be open and you also will be as God. You'll be just like your husband, knowing good and evil. You are going to be equal or above your husband in knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. That's what the serpent is telling Eve. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of John 10. John. Because Christ says something about that thing. John chapter 10. Okay. Give me John 10 verse 34. Read that. The book of John chapter 10 verse 34. Mm -hmm. Jesus answered them. Is it not written in your law? I said, ye are gods. Yeah, that was a, that's a heavy verse right there. Is it Jesus answered them, is it not written in your law? I said, ye are gods. So Christ is repeating the same thing that David said, which is what we read in Genesis 3. You understand? That's a heavy thing right there. I'll explain it to you someday. Lord knows. Now watch this. What I'm showing you here is that Eve, guess what Eve was doing? Eve, she was enticed by what the, the thing that they did. These entire these flattery words that the serpent was saying to her. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of um, give me wisdom of Solomon 10, verse 1. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 10, verse 1. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 10, verse 1. Read. She preserved the first formed father of the world uh -huh. that was created alone. Read and brought him out of his fall. 
But it is the first formed father of the world that was created alone. That's talking about Adam. Next verse, go ahead. And gave him power to rule all things. So Adam had power and dominion over all, every bit of God's creation. You understand? And Eve knew that, and the serpent knew that. Now watch this. Go back to Genesis 3 now. Genesis chapter 3. Okay. Genesis chapter 3. Read verse 6. The book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 6. Read. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and it was pleasant to the eyes, mm -hmm. and a tree to be desired to make one wise, Mm -hmm. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. So, what you are seeing here is that, you see what he's saying? Is that when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eye, meaning what? Beautiful to behold, and a tree to be desired to make one wise. Because that's what he was looking for. The wisdom that her husband was teaching her was not enough. You understand? He says he took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also to her husband with her and he did eat. Now watch this. You see that part right there when it says the tree was good for food? Meaning good for what? Good for learning, good for knowledge. And that it was pleasant to the eyes, meaning something she could see. Meaning this tree came with the knowledge of other things. Now watch this. Give me that to me, Wisdom of Solomon 14, verse 12. You understand? Wisdom of Solomon, chapter you know 14. Hold on. Wait, wait a second. Hmm. Give me. Uh, before we go there, right? Before we go there, give me the book. Let me see if I want to go there first. Yeah, I get it. Wisdom of Solomon 14, give it. Wisdom of Solomon 14, verse 12. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 12. Come on. For the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication. Read. Really? And the invention of them, the corruption of life. So the devising of idols, which the tree, you understand, that was desired, what was pleasant to the eye, you understand, and the tree to be desired to make, with the fruit to work, we said the tree to be desired to make one wise. Idolatry. So the devising of idols, this tree came with what? Idolatry. You understand? It says what was the beginning of spiritual fornication and the invention of them, of these idols, the corruption of life, Adam's life through Eve by the serpent. You understand? Now watch this. Give me that in, um, give me, give me the, go back to Genesis 3. Mm, let me go back there. Okay, Genesis 3. The book of Genesis, chapter 3, verse 6. Wait. Really? And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes. Meaning she could see, beautiful to behold, because this tree came with knowledge that was what? That was pleasant to the eyes. This tree came with knowledge that was pleasant to the eyes, beautiful to behold. She was able to see this stuff, Wait. Really? And a tree to be desired to make one wise. Mm -hmm. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Now I want to show you something. Watch this. He said, The tree, what? what? He says, The tree to be desired to make one wise. This tree came with knowledge, knowledge that was pleasant to the eye. He was, was enticed by it. You understand? She was captured and captivated by it. Watch this. Now go back to Wisdom of Solomon 14, read verse 27 now. Because this is the sin that was committed in the garden through Eve by the serpent. It was not because they ate the fruit, the apple. He doesn't say that. You understand? The sin in the garden was not that they ate an apple. Because that was the diet that was given in Genesis 1, verse 11, 12, and 29. So there's nothing wrong with eating apples, bananas, and oranges. That was the diet back then. The vegan diet that the Lord gave to us. So that's no, that wasn't the same. Okay. Wisdom of Solomon 14, verse 27. Read that. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 27. Go ahead. For the worshipping of idols, not to be named, mm -hmm. is the beginning, the cause, and the end of all evil. 
Do you see that thing? The worshiping of idols not to be named, not to be named is the beginning, the beginning, the cause and the end of all evil. Because the sin in the beginning in Genesis was idolatry, worshiping of idols. You understand? And when Eve saw, you understand, this tree that was that was she desired it because it could make one wise. She took off the fruit that came from this tree. You understand? Because she liked it. She liked that thing. Watch this. Give me the book of Second Chronicles. Give me to tell me four verse nineteen first. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 19. Because if you look at today, right, look at what um, look at what the white man is doing. They're going to traveling to space. You understand? Elon Musk just launched a um, a civilian space program where civilians can go to the to the International Space Station. You understand? You, it's on Netflix. I saw it not so long ago. And the guess who was um, with the four people? They call them the inspirational four. Out of those four people, it was three Edomites, three white people, and one black woman. Mm, isn't that interesting? One black woman, Eve. Where are they going? They're going to the. They're going one. They're going up there in space. They're going to space. They tree to be desired to make one wise, because this tree came with the knowledge of what the stars, the moon, the sun, the planets, worshiping of these things. You understand? And Eve liked that thing. Now watch this. Give me that in Deuteronomy 4 verse 19. Read that. Book of Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 19. Read. And lest thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven. Unto what? Unto heaven. He says, lest thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven. Remember it says the tree was desired to make one wise. You understand? And it was pleasant to the eyes. So Eve was enticed by this stuff, the host of heaven. You understand, Ray? And when thou seest the sun, when thou seest the sun, and the moon, and the moon, Ray, and the stars, and the stars, read on. Even all the hosts of her, of heaven, even all the hosts of heaven. That's why, if you look at, especially the black women, they are always looking at horoscopes, astrology. You understand? Some of them, they, they, are, they, are, they are practicing astrology. They'll be telling you, no, when the moon is like this, it means the emotions are like this. You know, when the sun is, is red, it means such and such. The black woman is involved in that thing. Astrology, okay? She is astrology and horoscopes. You understand? All of that, the planets, the stars and all that, the lucky charms and all that. Yes, the black woman is always involved in that stuff. That's what we're reading here. And that's what happened in Genesis. Who's bringing those things? It's not us. The white man is pushing those things out. You understand? Read that again. Verse 19. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4, verse 19. Come on. And lest thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven. Read. And when thou seest the sun mm -hmm. and the moon Read. and the stars, even all the host of heaven, should us be driven to worship them? To do what? Should us be driven to worship them? Should us should be driven to worship them? How are they worshiping these things? Because the sister will be saying, "Me, I'm Sagittarius. Me, I'm uh, uh, what? Uh, Aries. Is that what it's called? Me, I'm Scorpio. Me, I'm whatever. All these horoscopes and all that. Yes, that's what we're reading here. Should us be driven to worship them and to do what? Go ahead and serve them." And serve them, read. Which the Lord thy God hath divided unto all nations under the whole heaven. Watch this. Give me Second Chronicles 33, verse 3. Read that. Second Chronicles chapter 33, verse 3. This thing of astrology and all that stuff, listen. Lucky charms and whatnot. The black women, they love that thing. Okay. They're making a lot of money. I remember I used to work for a telecommunication company. And they used to have, they used to make a lot of money on horoscopes. You understand? You know, today, because you are a Sagittarius, you are a Scorpio, you are a this, you know, today your mood is like this. And people used to buy the prediction of these things online. They are still doing it today. You understand? Read that. Second book of Chronicles, chapter 33, verse 3. Read. For he built again the high places. 
which Hezekiah, his father, had broken down. Mm -hmm. And he reared up altars for Balaam and made groves and worshipped all the hosts of heaven and served them. Because that's what he was doing. That's what that's the tree that she desired because the tree came with knowledge that not that that her husband did not teach it. You understand? It says, and worshipped all the host of heaven and served them. Watch this. Give me that in 2 Kings chapter 23, verse 5. 2 Kings chapter 23, verse 5. I'm going over this to show you what really went down in the garden. You understand? It's not because they ate an apple. Read that. Idolatry. Today, who's the number one people that go to the Sangomas? The black women. Now, today, they are even one. They are even, um, they are, they are over sensationalizing the, the Sangomas, Barry, Abu Koko, what, what? You see them on TV, you see them on YouTube, Barry Abu Koko, and all of that. Who's the number, Mamla Ambo? Who's pushing that stuff? The black woman. Mm -hmm. Nothing new under the sun. Okay, read that. Second Kings 23, verse 5. Read. Second book of Kings, chapter 23, verse 5. Read. And he put down the idolatrous priests whom the king of Judah had ordained to burn incense in the high places. In the cities of Judah and in the places round about Jerusalem. Them also that burnt incense unto, ba unto Baal to the sun mm -hmm. and to the moon really? and to the planets mm -hmm. and to all the host of heaven. You see that thing? It says to the sun, they bent incense unto Baal, meaning the devil, to the sun. That's why they go to church on Sunday to worship the sun, sun worship, and to the moon. You understand? Our brothers and sisters that are in Islam, they worship the moon, the moon goddess. Okay? That's why they celebrate Easter. You understand? That's why they celebrate Valentine's Day and so forth. Yes, the moon goddess, Semiramis, and to the planets. That's why now they be saying, no, women are from Mars and men are from Jupiter and all of that. They even wrote a book about that. I might be mixing it up, but there's a book similar to that. You understand? And now today, the black woman is going to space now. You look in the US, the black woman is interested, fascinated with space. You understand? That's what we're reading here. It says to the sun, to the moon, and to the planets. Because now when you watch that movie, that document, not a movie, that documentary by Elon Musk, the black woman is already talking about heavy, you know, living on Mars, going to live on other planets, and so on and so forth. The, because the tree that is she desired, because she's, he's got knowledge of good and evil, meaning wickedness, she desired that instead of the wisdom that her husband taught her. She said, no, I don't want to listen to that now. I'm going to listen to this guy. So why did Eve listen to the serpent? Watch this. Give me that in wisdom of Solomon chapter 2. Okay, why did Eve listen to the serpent back then, which was a man, and today she's listening to the same serpent, the same spirit of the serpent that was in the garden, which is the white man. What was the reason behind Eve going that direction. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon 2. Let's start at the 23. We're going to read 23 and 24. Read that. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 23. Go ahead. As for the mysteries of God. No, no, no. no. Wisdom of Solomon 2, verse 23. Go ahead. Verse 23. Mm -hmm. For God created man to be immortal. He created Adam to be mortal and the people that came out of Adam to be mortal as well. Read. And made him to be an image of his own eternity. So Adam was made in the image of God. That's what you read in Genesis 1, 26 and Genesis 2, verse 7. Read. Nevertheless, through envy of the devil came death into the world. So is a through envy, through envy of the devil. Who envied the devil? Eve envied the devil. That's some heavy stuff right there. Eve envied the devil so that she can be equal or above her black man. So that's why today you see the black woman, she has no problem to submit, but she submits to the white man, but she don't want to submit to the black man. 
because she envies the devil. That's what we're reading here. Read it again, verse 24. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 24. Read. Nevertheless, through envy of the devil came mm. death into the world. You see that thing? Through envy of the devil, death came into the world. That's what we read in Sarah 25, verse 19. And verse 24. So with Solomon, King Solomon is, is, is explaining the same thing. Through envy of the devil, death came death into the world. He's telling you, yes, it was through the woman, but what was the reason why Eve did what she did? Because she envied the devil. The knowledge that came with the devil so she can be equal or above her man. Because she was complaining to the devil. That's why today you see our, our brother, George Floyd, was put to death. You understand? Eight minutes and 43 seconds. He was put to death, George Floyd. Who was toy toying on the streets? Even here, everywhere on the, all, on the, on the whole earth, who was toy toying? The, mainly the black woman. Yes, the black man was doing it, but majority was the black woman. Who were they complaining and crying to? The white man. But black men get killed every day. You don't see white black women who are flooding the streets to toy toy. Black babies are killed by the millions through abortion by the black woman. You don't see black women flooding the streets and toy toying about that. You see that thing? The level of envy is so deep, you understand, is the disease. Understand that thing, okay? Read that again, verse 24. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 24. Read. Really? Nevertheless, through envy of the devil, came death into the world. Through envy of the devil came death into the world, come on. And they that do hold of his side do find it. So now, let's go back to Genesis chapter 3 now. Genesis 3. Because what the Apostle Paul said, he was really just quoting some heavy stuff. Okay? Okay, I'm just going to touch on this topic a little bit so we can understand. I'm trying to show you really how heavy this stuff is. Okay, you know what? Before we get Genesis 3, read, give me second Ezra chapter 7. Second Ezra chapter 7. Okay. Second Ezra chapter 7 and verse. Second Ezra 7, verse 11. Read that. Second book of Esther, chapter 7, verse 11. Read. Because for their sakes I made the world. For our sakes. And when the world. Hold on. He's telling us the world was made for our sakes. That's what he's saying. Okay. Read verse 11. For their sakes, I made the world. Okay. Second Could book of Esther, chapter 7, verse 11. Go ahead. Come on. Because for their sake, because for their sakes, I made the world. Mm -hmm. And Come when on. Adam transgressed my statutes, then was decreed that now is done. He says, then was decreed that now is done. What was decreed? That now we have to lose the kingdom. We have to work hard for it now. Because of what Eve did. You understand? Because when he says that I, when Adam transgressed my statutes, because Adam, Adam, Eve is the one that committed the sin. Adam he partook in what is called presumptuous sin. You understand? That's the topic for another day. But what I'm showing here is that is that then was decreed that now is done. What was decreed? Now you're gonna have to work for the kingdom because before this, before this, this evil happened, the Lord gave the kingdom to us on a silver platter from the time of Genesis. Read on. Then were the entrances of this world made narrow. The entrances of this world now, they are made narrow. Now we have to work extra 100 million times to keep the commandments and to overcome our sins so we can prepare for the second coming of Christ. Read. Full of sorrow and travail. You see that? Full of sorrow and travail. Look at the conditions of our people. Look at the impoverished state. Look at the killings. Look at the black on black crime. Black men filling up the jails. Black women killing our babies through abortion. Single parent households, you understand? STDs running rampant in the community. Homosexuality in the community. You understand? Drunkenness, nyaupe, in the community. Full of sorrow and travail. Go ahead. 
they are but few and evil, mm -hmm. full of perils and very painful. You see that thing? That's the world that we're living in now. You understand? Because of sin. Read. For the entrances of the elder world were wide and short. Read. And brought immortal fruit. The entrances of the elder world during the time when Adam was given the commandments before the sin, it says it's what was? It says if they were wide and they were short and they brought immortal fruit. We live forever. You understand? We lost all of that because of what the envy that Eve had or to the devil. She had Eve, she had envy, he envied the devil. And that's how death entered into the world. Now we have to catch hell now because of that. You understand? Now, let's go back to first Timothy 2. No, no, Genesis 3, Genesis 3, verse 3. Genesis 3. Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. Read. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes Come on. and a tree to be desired to make one wise, mm -hmm. she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. You see what happened here? The, the, this, this, this right here, what we're reading is called role reversals. Because from the time, from the beginning, God commanded Adam to teach his wife. Now, after Eve had learned the, 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 the astrology, the planets, and all of these other philosophies and doctrines, now she brings them to Adam to teach her husband. You see that? Now the roles are reversed. Now the woman is teaching the man. Isn't that what's happening today? That's the same thing that's going on today. You go to the churches, who's standing in front of the pulpit? The black woman, you understand? You go to the corporate, when you go to corporate companies, who's holding key strategic position? The black woman. I'll give an example. You go to HR, who's running the show? The black woman. You go to finance, who's running the show? The black woman. Who's hiring? The black woman. She's the one that is put in this key strategic position to do what? To be the gatekeeper. You understand? She's the one. All these social gatherings and all of that in the corporate companies, guess who's responsible for that? The black woman. You understand? When you look at, um, you, know, um, you know, HR, you look at HR, finance, you look at uh, corporate service, corp or CSI that they do these community outreach programs from the, these, these corporate companies, who's running that? The black woman is always at the center of it. You understand? PR, public relations, who's in the forefront? Who do they put there? The black woman. You understand? It's the same thing. She's the, now we go to the bank. Who's the tellers? The black woman. You go to where you deposit money. Who's the, who's the, the black woman? You see that thing? I need you men to see what's going on here. You understand? That's why when you walk into the bank, the black woman sees you. She don't greet you. She don't say, how are you, sir? Let the white woman walk in. Let the white man walk in. How are you, sir? Let the Indian man walk in. How are you, sir? Good morning, ma'am. They say ma'am and sir. They know how to do that. But like a black, let a black man walk in. Mm, San Bonan. You see that thing? She'd be changing her face. That's what we're reading here. Put the pieces of the puzzle together so you can understand what's going on. Go to the hospital. Who's at the reception? Who's the nurses most of, most of the time? The black woman. You understand? I need you to see this thing. You see what's going on. Go to the schools. Who's teaching our young, our, our sons and daughters? The black woman mainly. You understand? Understand what's going on here. And who's setting this all up? The white man. He is the culprit behind this whole thing. You understand? So now the white man has turned the black woman against her black man, but she goes back to her white, or to his white woman, and the white woman goes back to her white man. And the sister is single by herself, fro frozen in time. Hmm? Raising boy, raising these kids, these, these boys to be what? To be feminine, to be into their feelings, raising these girls to be what? To be masculine and alpha females. That's what we're seeing in the black community. 
Everything is done messed up, but the prophets are back. It's a new day. Understand that. Watch this. Now, give me the right 36 verse 25. It is the African. Okay, 36 verse 25. This class is going to be long. I'm telling you right now. The right 36 verse 25. It's the Sabbath. Don't nobody go nowhere. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 36, verse 25. Where no hedge is, there is possession. There the possession is spoiled. And he that hath no wife will wander up and down mourning. I'm sorry, okay. Let's read that verse again. It's right 36, verse 25. Come on. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 36, verse 25. Read. Where no hedge is, there the possession is spoiled. That's exactly what happened to our foremother Eve. When there's no hedge, which is a leader, you understand? He says the possession becomes spoiled. That's exactly what happened to our foremother Eve. That's what's happening to the black woman today. Because the black woman, she says she's independent, but she's not independent from a man. She's independent from a specific man on this earth, the black man. But she's dependent on the white man. The way she dresses, the way she speaks, you understand, the way she carries herself, how she puts hair on her head, the level of self-hatred she got, where is she learning that from? Her white man that she depends on. So now she's being spoiled spiritually, physically, and mentally, you understand, because the black man is not there. And the black man is rising up in the spirit of Christ. The black woman despises that because why? The Bible holds both the black man and the black woman accountable. You understand? Watch this. Give me that in Proverbs chapter 31, verse 11. Proverbs 31, verse 11. Watch this. He says, Where no hedge is, there the possession is spoiled. Watch this. The book of Proverbs chapter 31, verse 11. Read. The heart of her husband doth, doth safely trust in her. Mm hmm so that he shall have no need of spoil. You see what it says? It says the heart of her husband that safely trust in her. Because guess what happened? When, when, Adam trusted Eve, when Adam trusted Eve with the knowledge that he gave her, he said, listen, keep the commandment, run my house, make sure that the house is in order. Because remember, Adam was running the whole earth. Don't misunderstand. Adam was a god on earth. Adam was given the whole earth to rule and have dominion over. Eve's job was to do what? Was to take care of business that Aram commanded. Hey, listen, I need you to make sure that things are in order while I'm running the world, while I'm conquering, while I'm ruling everybody, every, everybody and everything. She didn't like that thing. You understand? She did not like that thing. When she was empowered, because the black man was in full, in full power, might, and dominion over everything and everyone. She did not like that thing. You understand? So now it says so that we shall have no need of spoil. Because the goods are not going to be spoiled. Because why? Because of the hedge that he put around him. But he said, no, I don't want that. And that's why it says through her we all die. At the bottom of all nations now. You understand? It's really some deep stuff here. Watch this. Give me that. Now, let's deal with this. Give me Proverbs 6. Give me Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16. Watch this. It's about to take a turn left. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16. Read what you got. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16. Go ahead. These six things does the Lord hate. Mm -hmm. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. So the Lord is going to tell you the things that he hates and despises. Okay? Watch this. Go ahead. A proud look a proud look, meaning, what does it mean? What is a proud look? Meaning a look, meaning the way people see you. Because God gave us a dress code, how women must dress, how men must dress. The minute you go outside of that dress code that God gave you, that is a proud look. Go ahead. A lying tongue. God hates a lying tongue. Because guess what? We're going to be going over the lying, murderous, evil, ashy, black woman. Go ahead. And hands that shed innocent blood. Now that's heavy right there. And hands that shed innocent blood. 
murder. Go ahead. Because when you look at the news, you see the things that the black woman is doing. Listen, it's amazing. I don't see black women toying out on the streets because of the acts, the evil, murderous, unbelievable, abominable acts that the black woman is committing. Nobody wants to talk about that. We're going to talk about it. Go ahead. And heart that devises wicked imaginations. That's the fourth thing. Is a, a, and a heart that devises wicked imaginations. Meaning what? Premeditation. Premeditated murder and evil. Wickedness. Go ahead. Feet that be swift in running to mischief. And feet that be swift in running to mischief. The Lord says we hate this stuff. Go ahead. A false witness that speaketh lies. A false witness that speaketh lies, great. And him that soweth discord, discord among brethren. He that soweth discord among brethren, meaning cause problems among brothers and sisters. Now what says? What I want to deal with right here is what? Read, jump up. Okay, jump up to verse 17. Read verse 17 again. The book of Proverbs, chapter 6, verse 17. Read. A proud look, mm -hmm. a lying tongue, Come on. and hands that shed innocent blood. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. You understand? Lying and murder. Watch this. Now, give me the book of Proverbs chapter 5. Okay? Give me Proverbs chapter 5 and verse 3. Proverbs 5 verse 3. Watch this. The book of Proverbs, chapter 5, verse 3. Mm -hmm. For the lips of a strange woman drop as an honeycomb. The lips of a strange woman, this is an evil, black, ashy woman, is as drop as a honeycomb. Meaning what? She will flatter you with her words. Go ahead. And her mouth is smoother than oil. Meaning this sister, she got game. She knows how to make you feel like you're the best thing that has ever happened since sliced bread. Go ahead. But her end is bitter as wormwood. You see what it says, but her end is bitter as wormwood. Meaning what? The, the, the end, every, after all, everything, after she's done what she's done to you, after, after sucking you dry, guess what your end is? Death. Because it says her end is bitter as wormwood, meaning poisonous. Go ahead. Sharp as a two-edged sword. You see that thing? Is that the end is bitter as wormwood, meaning poisonous, sharp as a two-edged sword. Meaning what? This woman, listen, she's like, uh, she's like, she's she's basically a walking grave, ready to what uh, to catch souls. You understand? Ready? Her feet go down to death. Mm. Her steps take hold on hell. You see that thing? That's the, that's, the, that's the end. That's why the verse 4 says, but her end is bitter as wormwood. So verse 5 explains verse 4. You understand? It says her feet go down to death and it says her steps take hold on hell. Meaning this woman is poisonous. She's going to devour. She's going to destroy you. She's going to kill you slowly and put you to death. Go ahead. Lest thou shouldest ponder the path of life. Mm-hmm. Her ways are movable, that thou canst not know, canst not know them. Read verse 6 again, read it right, come on. The book of Proverbs, chapter 5, verse 6. Read. Lest thou shouldest ponder the path of life. Mm -hmm. Her ways are movable, that thou cannot know them. So, do you see what King Solomon is saying? He says, lest thou shouldest ponder the path of life. He says, ponder the path of life. What is the path of life? The laws of God. That's the path of life. He says, her ways are movable. Meaning this woman, she's unstable. She's unstable. That's why these women that are, that they, these women that are angry, you know, angry women, women that have bitterness in their hearts. You understand? Women that, um, that at the drop of a dime, they are ready for a fight. You understand? They are manipulative. That's them. He says, her ways are movable. They are the center of attention. You understand? If nobody's chasing after them, they don't feel any power. They feel the power when men are chasing after them. When men are begging for them, 
guess what? He says, her ways are movable. He says, stay away from that type of sister. Her ways are movable, meaning she's unstable. She cannot be trusted. That's what the Lord is saying. There's a song that said, that girl is poison. Oh, yes. That's what the, the Bible is saying right there. He says that, that thou cannot know them because I'm movable. She's always moving around. She's slippery. You understand? Watch this. Now, I'm going to share my screen, okay? Because we're going to deal with a sister. She's been making headlines. She got my attention, all right? Watch this. Let me share my screen real quick, okay? Let me share my screen. Okay. Uh, can you, brothers and sisters, see my screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir. So, um, so pay attention. This sister, right? This woman, she was charged. She was charged with murder in 2015, and she pleaded not guilty. And she what? She got away with it. Now the Lord, she the Mosai God activated the elements to make sure that guess what? She's going to pay for what she's done. Watch this. Now this is 2015. We're doing a recap. <laughs> It says, while Meda, while Meda accused Nomian Glovu testifies at the Palm Ridge Magistrate Court about her late boyfriend. So this is 2015, late boyfriend, because she killed him. Okay, she killed the brother. Maurice Mabas. His sister, Luceth Mabasa, sits quietly in the gallery listening because now she's been cross-questioned, this woman. To the details surrounding her brother's death. We took her as our sister-in-law. She sat on the matters like a wife and we never made her feel unwelcome. So we planned everything with her. If she no longer wanted to be with him, why didn't she just break up with him instead of killing him? And in such a brutal man. It hurts. It's not easy seeing her like this. It is worse when she acts like she's too, she too feels the pain we feel. Meaning what? Because she's pretentious. You understand? She is a black ashy demon. But I don't think she feels anything. We never suspected that it could be her. That is why I say we are shocked. We regarded her as one of our sisters. My brother, special for room, especially our mom. Mm -hmm. Life, life at home is no longer what it used to be. We now have nothing and we are struggling. If you are still here, life would be different. Our mom is not okay. She's our only parent. We do not have a father, and he was a father to us. But now, because so we just wanted to be sentenced appropriately. We do not want her to be sentenced then. Tomorrow we bump into her on the streets. At least like Nazis can go on but okay. Alright, like Mishunguti, 
I sent him see when I lent you like Mele. I sent him see when I. I do it all the time. I'm sure we are sent him some benefits as a slang and waste. Maurice Mavaza's body was found in Olifant's Fontaine. In October 2015, it has been stabbed about 80 times. Mm. Lovu allegedly received more than 416,000 mm. insurance claims after Mabasa's death. She continues to maintain her innocence. Okay, so now what's happening is that she says she didn't do it, okay? She says she didn't do it, and guess what? She got away with it. Now watch this. Watch, watch what happens next. This is now, now. Watch this. Now, this is 2018 now, March 7, 2018. Now, I want you, brothers and sisters, to pay close attention. You can hear the sound, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All places to the most line. Okay. Listen to what's going on here. This is Rosemary and Glovu. And in 2018, she was a police officer in Timbisa. So she's a police officer. Okay. She's been recorded, you understand, some by some undercover brother, you understand, who's also part of the police, but... She doesn't know that this brother is, is recording everything that's going on. Because remember now, this is 2017. 2015, she got away with murder by killing that brother and got 416,000 for him for his murder, okay? She doesn't know it, but she's currently being recorded by an undercover police officer acting as a hitman. And Glover has asked a hitman in the back of this vehicle to kill her sister and her sister's five young children. Mm -hmm. You can't make this stuff up. Now, you see, she's bound to repeat it, okay? Now she's hiring a hitman to kill her sister and her sister's five children. You understand? She is taking them to her sister's house in Bushbuck Ridge, a five-hour drive from where they are in Joburg in order to show them where her sister lives and how to kill her. Mm, 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 mm. This woman is the devil, okay? This undercover footage reveals shocking details that Nglovu gives the hitman and the undercover cop on how to enter her sister's house and set alight her entire family. So now she's, she's planning the, the assassination, you understand? The hit, you understand? She's going to neutralize the sister and her five children. Guess what? Guess what for? Insurance money. You understand? Because she's greedy or filthy lucre. He says, Rosemary drove. Once they are asleep, you can use the window to get in. He says, I know that when it comes to the when it comes to the mom, meaning her sister. She loves her sleep. She sleeps, she sleeps like a log. According to the states, Nglovu has murdered six people since 2012. You see that thing? Now, it's even this thing is going back 2012. Is that she murdered six people since 2012. So 2015 was the second recent murder that she committed. You understand? Now she's planning a hit. For the next these ones now by poisoning setting fire to their homes and arranging hitmen to kill them so the things that she's going to do so that she can get the insurance money is what poisoning uh using a hitman to poison so that she can get the insurance money and kill the children and burn them alive hmm. her reasons well it's alleged she committed these crimes for money from funeral and life insurance policies that she would take out on her victims. And it is alleged that she has benefited 1.5 million rand by killing her boyfriend and five family members. But on this day in 2018, she wouldn't succeed in killing her sister, as today she would be caught. So now, now we're going to continue. Watch this. 
So there's three things, there's, there's a couple of things that they are mentioning here of what the sister's planning to do. Because she's already killed six people and she benefited 1.5 million rands. Now she's planning the next hit to kill another six people. You understand? Which will, which will be 12. But at this point, she's not going to succeed because there is a God. Watch this. So poisoning, getting a hitman for insurance money and to set them on fire because it must look like an accident. You know, she watches, she watches a lot of mafia, Italian mafia movies, you see, um, and killing of the kids. Watch this. Now let's deal with the poisoning part. No, no, let's deal with the hitman first. Give me the book of Exodus 23 verse 8. Okay, because she's hiring a hitman. So this is premeditated murder. Okay. Read that. Exodus 23, verse 8. The book of Exodus, chapter 23, verse 8. Go ahead. And thou shalt take no gift, for the gift blinded the wise and perverted the words of the righteous. He says, Thou shalt take no gift, meaning bribe. For the bribe will blind the wise and perverted the words of the righteous. So that's what's happening here. She's she's what she's hiring a hitman to take out her sister and her five kids. You understand? She has no love for her sister. She does not have a neighbor as herself. She hates a neighbor as she hates herself. You understand? Watch this. Give me Deuteronomy 27, verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 27, verse 1. Because this is we was now we are in the wilderness. The Lord is, is speaking to Moses to teach us the law, and we must agree to the things that are being, going to be read to us. You understand? Read that. Deuteronomy 27, verse 1. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 27, verse 1. Come on. And Moses, with the elders of Israel, commanded the people, say, Keep all the commandments which I command you this day. He says, keep all the commandments which I command you this day. Jump down to verse 9. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 27, verse 9. Come on. And Moses and the priests, the Levites, spake unto all Israel, say, Take heed and hearken, O Israel. Mm -hmm. This day thou art become the people of the Lord thy God. He says, this day thou art become the people of the Lord thy God. So he's talking to all Israel. So this is Moses and the priest, the Levites. He says, they spoke unto all Israel, all twelve. Go ahead. Thou shalt therefore obey the voice of the Lord thy God, and do his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. So now he says, you see, the voice of the Lord our God is that to do his commandments, and his statutes which are commanded this day. So this is a precept you can use for Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. Watch this. Now jump down to verse 24 now. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 27, verse 24. Yes. Cursed be he that smiteth his neighbor secretly. Hmm. And all the people shall say, Amen. And all the people shall say, Amen. We agree. He says, Cursed, cursed be he that smited his neighbor secretly. Because that's what she's planning to do. To smite her sister secretly and to make it look like an accident. You understand? Like, no, it's natural causes. That's why they want to set fire. They want to poison them. They want to drag them. So that when the fire is set on the house, guess what? They're going to burn. The house is going to bend down upon them. And guess what? She's going to claim the insurance money. You understand? Read verse 25. Come on. Verse 25. Mm -hmm. Cursed be he that taketh reward to slay an innocent person. You see that thing? The hitman. Because she's hiring the hitman. Is it cursed be he that taketh reward to slay an innocent person? Remember, give me go back to Proverbs 6, verse 17. Okay. Proverbs 6, verse 17. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 17. Read. A proud look, mm -hmm. a lying tongue, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. Because that's what this woman is doing. No me and love. That's what she's doing. You understand? She's planning a hit and she's going to reward for the hit. She's going to pay them because of the insurance money that she's going to get. So now she's addicted to all these monies 
that she's getting unjustly, slaying the innocent. You understand? Go back to Deuteronomy 27, verse 25. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 27, verse 25. Read. Cursed be he that taketh reward to slay an innocent person. Mm -hmm. And all the people shall say, Amen. And all the people shall say, Amen, meaning we agree. Watch this. Give me Sarah 11, 31. Because our forefathers said we agree. This is mothers, fathers, and children, sons and daughters. We all said we agree. Sarah chapter 11, verse 31. Of Ecclesiasticus chapter 11, verse 31. Come on. For he lieth in wait mm -hmm. and turneth good into evil. You see that thing? He says, For he lieth in wait, because this is now the hitman. He's gonna he's gonna lie in wait and turn the good into evil, meaning the innocent is gonna shed innocent blood because this black Asian woman now she wants money, she's addicted to this money now. Go ahead. And in things worthy, and in things worthy, praise will lay blame unto thee. You see, you see, and in things worthy, praise will lay blame upon thee. Meaning what? She's going to slander, she's going to lie. She says, I didn't do it. She's not going to plead guilty. Go ahead. Of a spark of fire, a heap of coals is kindled. And a sinful man lieth wait for blood. You see what he's saying? Is that of a spark of fire, a heap of coals is kindled. Meaning a spark of fire. You know when we're having a bride, you put all the stuff together, the coals and all that. And then guess what? You put the fire lighters. And then you, you set the flame. Just a spark will catch the fire. You understand? So he's saying, in the 16, it says, and a sinful man layeth wait for blood. Because all you have to do, just set the right conditions. That's what she's doing here. And she's promising them what? She's promising them all the monies that she's going to get from the insurance. That's what she's doing. Give me Sarah 27, 26. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 27, verse 26. Me? Whoso diggeth a pit shall fall therein. Remember what we read, it says she got caught. This time she's going to get caught. But you see, it says, whoso diggeth a pit shall fall therein. What, is, what, what pit is she digging? She's planning a murder, an assassination, a hit for her, of her own sister and her five children. You understand? Read. And he that setteth a trap shall be taken therein. Because she's setting a trap to kill her sister and her kids. Read. He that worketh mischief, it shall fall upon him. Mm -hmm. And he shall not know whence it cometh. Because there is a God. The most like God is a God of justice and judgment. It says, he that worketh mischief, it shall fall upon him. And he shall not know whence it cometh. Meaning what? when she least expects it, because that's what's going on here. She's not expecting it, and that's exactly what's going to happen on this day. Watch this. Give me Sarah 34, verse 18. Ecclesiastes, chapter 34, verse 18. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 34, verse 18. Read. He you know what's wrong? Wait, wait. No, no. Let's, let's hold it. Let's stop right there. You understand? Let's stop right there. I'm going to give you that later on. Watch this. Now, remember what she said. What we, what we, let me go back a little bit. According to the states, Nglovu has murdered six people since 2012 by poisoning, setting fire to their homes, and arranging hitmen to kill them. So this is, this is, this, this is a MO. This is a MO. You understand? She poisons. She, she kills, she sets, she sets the residence on fire. You understand? So that it looked like an accident. You understand? That's why she lies in wait, planning mischief. Her reasons? Well, it's alleged she committed these crimes for money from funeral and life insurance policies that she would take out on her victims. And it is alleged that she has benefited 1.5 million rand by killing her boyfriend and five family members. 
But on this day in 2008... And guess what? She's doing this to her family members. You understand? Grand, you know, aunties, cousins, nephews, boyfriends, and so forth. She wouldn't succeed in killing her sister. As today, she would be caught. So now, what I'm showing you here, I want to show, I want to deal with the insurance part. You understand? Be but before we deal with the insurance, let me deal with the poison because he says she poisons them. You understand? She poisons them and she kills them. She said they hit men to kill them. And then guess what? She, they set them on fire. You understand? But the way it's done, it's done in a way that it looked like an accident. Watch this. Give me that in Deuteronomy 32, verse 24. Deuteronomy 32, okay? Deuteronomy 32 and verse 24. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 24. Go ahead. They shall be burnt with hunger and mm -hmm. devoured with burning heat. Because that's what's going to happen also. Because this scripture is dealing with multiple things. You understand? And devoured with burning heat, that's how she kills the, the victims. You understand? Really? And with bitter destruction. Really? I will also send the teeth of beasts upon them. With evil women. Evil, wicked, evil, wicked women that don't care if they kill for money. You understand? She's an evil beast. Really? With the poison of serpents of the dust. You see that thing? With the poison of the serpents of the dust. Talk about men. Watch this. Evil, wicked men and women. At this point, we're talking about this black, ashy, evil woman. Give me Job 20, verse 16. The book of Job, chapter 20, verse 16. Read that. Come on, Job 20, verse 16, read that. The book of Job, chapter 20, verse 16. Come on. He shall suck the poison of apes. Mm. The book of Job, chapter 20, verse 16. Mm -hmm. He shall suck the poison of asps. Mm -hmm. The vipers, the viper's tongue shall slay him. He says, he shall suck the poison of ants. As is what is a poison from a poisonous snake. The viper's tongue shall slay him. Guess what? This woman, you, you see what she's doing? She's using poison to kill her victims. You understand? Watch this. Give me that in Psalm 58 verse 4. Psalm 58 verse 4. Of Psalms chapter 58, verse 4. Read. Really? Their poison is like the poison of a serpent. Mm -hmm. They are like the death. They oh, are like the death. Like... The book of Psalms chapter 48, verse 4. 58, verse 4. Chapter 58, verse 4. Come on. Their poison is like the poison of a serpent. They are like the deaf adder that stoppeth her ear. You see what he's saying? He says their poison is like the poison of a serpent. Because this woman, where did she get all this knowledge from? The serpent. Movies and, and television programs. You understand? Their poison is like the poison of a serpent. They are like the deaf adder that stoppeth her ear. Because she didn't learn from the, the, from the previous murders that she committed. So now she's like that deaf adder. She's like that deaf adder, uh, adder is a snake that blocked her ears. She doesn't want to what? She doesn't want to remember or hear the things that the police and the magistrate, the court said about what she did. She pleaded not guilty and she got away with it. Or she, so she thought. You understand? Watch this. Give me Psalm 140 verse 3. She didn't learn nothing. She's still repeating the same things. Okay. Come on, Psalms, Psalms. 140, 
verse 3. Verse 3. Read. They have sharpened their tongues like a serpent. Mm -hmm. Adder's poison is under their lips. Selah. You see what the Bible is saying? He says they have sharpened their tongues like a serpent. This woman has sharpened her tongue like a serpent. She moves like one. The things that she does, how she gets to execute the missions, the killings, the murderous behavior. Guess what? It says what? It says they have sharpened their tongues like a serpent. Eros poison is under their lips, meaning they are poisonous. Now she's planning how to kill, and she knows what method to kill her victim. She's using poison. She's using fire. She's using hitmen to do it. You understand? Watch this. Now, give me the book of Sirach 34, verse 18 now. Because let's deal with insurance. Well, she's doing this for insurance. Before we get to insurance, I'm going to save that for now in a couple of, in a couple of seconds. Give me Sirach 8, verse 10. Let's deal with the fire. Because she's using fire to kill her victims. You understand? Watch this. Sirach chapter 8, verse 10. We're going to deal with insurance later on after this. Watch this. Sirach chapter 8, verse 10. Read that. Of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 8, verse 10. Go ahead. Kindle not the coals of a sinner, mm -hmm. lest thou be burnt with the flame of his fire. You see that thing? He says, don't kindle the coals of a sinner. How is the cause of a sinner kindled? Because the, she does the first time, she gets away with it. She's okay, I can do it again and again and again. Now the cause of a sinner are kindled. It says, lest thou be burned with the flame of his fire. Literally, she does what she was doing, using the hitmen to kill and burn her victims, poison them, drug them, and set them on fire using the hitmen. Okay, go ahead. Rise not up in No, 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 no. That's it on that. Read, give me the book of Lamentations 4 verse 3. <clears throat> Excuse me. Lamentations 4 verse 3. Because remember what we what we, we, we had in the video is that she's planning to kill her sister and her kids. So she don't care about the kids as well. She don't give a hoot. Read what you got. Lamentations 4 verse 3. Go ahead. Lamentations chapter 4, verse 3. Come on. Even the sea monsters draw out the breast. Mm -hmm. They give suck to their young ones. Read. The daughter of my people is become cruel, like the ostriches in the wilderness. You hear what the Bible is saying? Is as the sea monster comparing, is as the sea monster, even the sea creature is better than the black woman. It says that, but they says the daughter of my people is become cruel. The black woman has become cruel. Look at the cruelty. Look at the planning, the plotting, the scheming. You understand that she has to do in order to kill her sister and to kill the kids. It says the daughter of my people meant the black woman has become cruel, like the ostriches in the wilderness. Because what do ostriches do? They be crushing their eggs. You understand? They crush their babies. That's what an ostrich does because the Lord has deprived the ostrich of wisdom. That's why. Watch this. Give me that in uh, Job 39. Okay? Job chapter 39, verse 13. Let's read that. The book of Job chapter 39, verse 18. No, 1-3. One, 1-3. Three. One, three. Job 39, verse 13. The book of Job, chapter 39, verse 13. Read. Gavest thou the goodly thing, gavest thou the goodly wings unto the peacocks, or wings and feathers unto the ostrich. So the Lord is saying, did you give goodly wings unto the peacocks? Because peacocks, a peacock has got beautiful wings, or wings and feathers unto the ostrich. Because you see the ostrich, the feathers, that's what he's describing here. He's asking the question. So it's been rhetorical. Go ahead. Verse 14. Read. Which leaveth her eggs in the earth. In the ground. Read. And warmest them in dust. And warmest them and warmest her eggs in dust. Watch this. Go ahead. And forgetteth that the foot may crush them. Mm -hmm. Or that the wild beast may break them. 
You see that thing? That's the foolishness of the of the ostrich. So the Lord is comparing the black woman to an ostrich. It says, and she will forget and forget it that the foot may crush them. Because the ostrich will forget where her eggs are laid. And she'll come back, she'll crush them. And the beast will also crush them because she forgets. That's how cruel the ostrich is. That's how cruel the black woman is. That's what we're seeing here with this black ashy demon. Go ahead. She is hardened against her young ones. Stop right there. Is that she's hardened against the her young ones. And guess what? She's not killing her kids. And we don't even know if she's got children. But what I'm showing you is that she's hardened against her young ones. Meaning she don't care about the kids. She don't care about the children. She only care about herself and the money she's going to get by killing her sister and her children. You understand? Right? As though they were not hers. As though they were not hers. And guess what? Because, yes, she, that's her sister's kids, but she's still, she's still the mother to them because she's the older sister. You understand? She's, she's an older sister. So she what? She's supposed to be mothers to them as well. Okay, come on. Her labor is in vain without fear. She has no fear. Look at what she's doing. No fear. She does not fear nothing because she got away with it the last time. You understand? Right? Because God has deprived her of wisdom. So God has deprived the black woman of wisdom. This type of black woman has no wisdom. The Lord has deprived her of wisdom. Right? Because God has deprived her of wisdom Neither mm -hmm. has he imparted to her understanding. Meaning what? She is what? She is, she is, she is dumb as a doorknob. Okay. Now watch this. Give me Sarah 22 verse 9. Okay. Sarah 22 verse 9. Read that. Sarah 22 verse 9. Read if children live honestly and have wherewithal, they shall cover the baseness of their children. Of their what? Read that again. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 22, verse 9. Read. If children live honestly and have wherewithal, they shall cover the baseness of their parents. You see that thing? If children live honestly, the only way the children are going to live honestly is what? is when they are taught the laws of God and they have everything they need is that they shall cover the business of their parents. This woman right here, guess what? She's an ungrateful daughter. She's a shameless daughter, this woman right here. You understand? She's not covering the business of her, of her parents. Guess what? She's what? She's disgraceful. She's disgracing her parents by what she's doing. And her sister-in-law, which was we saw earlier. Okay, come on. But children being haughty through being disdain. Proud. You see that part? But children being haughty. Remember what we read in Proverbs 6. It says a haughty look, a proud look. You understand? She's, she's got a proud look. She's haughty. You understand, really? And want of nurture do stain the nobility of their kindred. You see what they are doing? Now she wants to stain... She wants to she wants to destroy her own sister because she wants money. She wants to destroy or kill her own sister and her children because what she wants money. Is it but children being haughty through disdain, meaning what hatred, disrespect, you understand, shamelessness, and want of nature, lack of nature, they stain the nobility of their kindred. Now they start to what they start to destroy their own brothers and sisters and their kids too. And that's what this woman is doing. You understand? Because she wants money, insurance money. Watch this. Give me, give me Sarah now 34 verse 18. Ecclesiasticus chapter 34 verse 18. Read that. The book of Ecclesiasticus chapter 34 verse 18. Read. Read that. He that sacrificeth of a thing wrongfully gotten, his offering is ridiculous. Really? And the gifts of unjust men are not accepted. You see that thing? Because now she's going to give that hitman money reward for killing her sister and her kids. So what we're reading is, is he that sacrificed of a thing wrongfully gotten. 
Because that money she got it through what? Through murder. You understand? You understand? Through deceit, through hatred. He says his offering is ridiculous because you're offering the, the reward that you're going to pay this hitman. It, that's ridiculous. And the gifts of unjust men are not accepted. The Lord is not going to accept that thing. It's unacceptable what she's doing because it's evil as hell. You understand? Read. Jump down to verse 20. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 24, verse 20. 34, verse 20. Read. Chapter 34, verse 20. Whoso bringeth an offering of the goods of the poor doeth as one that killeth the son before his father's eyes. Mm, that's some heavy stuff right there. The Lord is comparing, he says, whoso bringeth an offering of the goods of the poor. Because what is the goods of the poor? Insurance money. You understand? The money that the funeral covers are going to bring, the insurance and all that, life insurance, funeral cover money and all that, that's what she's waiting for. You understand? And for six people, now if she succeeds, which she will not at this point, she will have 12 bodies on her hands. You understand? It says, is what it says, is as one that killed the son before his father's eyes. That's a cruel murder. You understand? That's a cruel murder right there. Read. The bread of the needy is their life. Mm -hmm. He that defrauded him thereof is a man of blood. You see that part right there? Because how does she know? Because well, she would have to know that the sisters got insurance policies, you understand? That the sisters got insurance policies and so forth. Or she took out life insurance policies for her sister. So that if case sister, when the sister dies and the children too, she will claim money from that thing. People do that now. You understand? Read that again. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 34, verse 21. Read. Right. The bread of the needy is their life. Mm -hmm. He that defrauded him thereof is a man of blood. Meaning what? He's a murderer. He's a man of blood. They are murderers. Read. He that taketh away his neighbor's living slayeth him. You take your, you, you see, because you don't love your neighbor. He says, he that taketh away his neighbor's living slayeth him. You are killing him. It's the same as murdering that brother. The same as murdering that sister. And that's what this woman is doing. Literally. Go ahead. And he that defrauded the laborer of his hire is a blood shedder. Is a blood shedder. You defraud the laborer of his hire, you don't pay them, you are a blood shedder. Okay, watch this. Now give me this Timothy 6 verse 6. All of this is because of what? Money, covetousness. You understand? Because she worships money. That's why she's doing what this. That's why she's planning all this evil that she's planning because money is a god. Give me that in First Timothy six verse six. First book of Timothy chapter six verse six. Go ahead. But godliness with contentment is great gain. This woman was not content. He says, but godliness and contentment is great gain, because you must be content with what you've got. Go ahead. For we brought nothing into this world. And it is certain we can carry nothing out. You see that thing? Wait, come on. And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. You see what the Lord is saying? Is that having food and raiment, meaning you've got clothes on your back, you've got food on the table, that goes also into what? Roof over your head. Basic needs in life. He says, let us, there with, let, us, let us be there with content. Be content, meaning what? Don't be greedy. You understand? Watch this. Give me that in Sarah 40, verse 18. Ecclesiastes, chapter 40, verse 18. Because a lot of the times you, you find the spirit of covetousness is running rampant in the black community. And the women, especially, they are very covetousness. They are very covetous. It's just that the media is not pushing that out like that. Watch this. Sarah 40, verse 18. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 40, verse 18. Really? To labor and to be content with that a man has is a sweet life. Stop right there. Because this woman is a policeman, is a policewoman. She's a cop. She was laboring. 
but she was not content with what she was getting. She was not content with getting an honest pay. She wasn't satisfied with that. He said, that's a sweet life. That was not a sweet life. Her sweet life is killing, is killing a family member and claiming the insurance. That's what speak to her. You understand? Watch this. Go back to 1 Timothy 6, read verse 9 now. 1 Timothy 6, verse 9. Come on. First book of Timothy, chapter 6, verse 9. Read. Really? But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare. Mm -hmm. A snare. Remember, it says, whoso diggeth a pit will be snared therewith. That's what she's doing. Go ahead. And into many foolish and hurtful lusts. Meaning she's going to get caught and be arrested. Read. Really? Which drown men in destruction and perdition. Now she has to what? She has to pay for what she's done. Read on. For the love of money is the root of all evil. You see that part right there? For the love, because the love of money is the root of all evil. Because of the love of money, guess what? You'll fall into what? Temptation. You understand? And a snare and into many foolish and hateful lusts which will drown men in destruction and perdition because of what? The love of money. The love of it. Read verse 10 again. First book of Corinthians, chapter 6, verse 10. Read. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Come on. Which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith. He has erred from the faith, this woman. Read. And pierced themselves through with many sorrows. You see that thing? They destroy themselves with many sorrows. Now she has to go to jail and pay for all the people that she killed in the past and the ones that she was planning to kill. Conspiracy to commit murder. Give me Sirach 20 verse 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 20 verse 9. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 20 verse 9. Read. There is a sinner that hath good success in evil things. Mm -hmm. And there is a gain that turneth to, to loss. You see what the Bible is saying? There is a sinner that had good success in evil things. She was successful the first time when she killed a boyfriend and she killed five family members. She was successful. She was successful in doing evil things, committing murder. You understand? Conspiracy to commit murder and committing the murder, and hiring hitmen to do it, okay? But he says what? And there is a gain that tenants to loss. Now, all the money that she, she received from the insurance money, you understand, from the insurance companies, 1.5 million, guess what? Now it's turning to loss. Now she wants another one, okay? Come on. There is a gift that shall not profit thee. Mm -hmm. And there is a gift whose recompense is double. Now the Lord is going to pay her double for what she's doing. Watch this. Give me Sirach 33 verse 19. Ecclesiastes. You see, when it comes to insurance monies and all of that, people just be taking insurance, insurance on you without your knowledge. You understand? You brothers and sisters, especially you men that want to get married to these sisters, you need to investigate these type of things to find out what type of sister she is. You understand what type of demon she's dealing with. If she's not going to put you to death because you are running your house according to the laws of God, she says, I hate this Negro right here. I'm going to poison him, you understand, and get insurance money and get paid. Like what we're seeing here. Because a lot of you, you're not going to connect it. You're not going to, you're not going to, it's not going to sink in your head. One day when it happens, you will remember this class right here. So pay close attention. Don't be sleeping up in here. Okay. Read that. Sirak 33, verse 19. Of Ecclesiasticus chapter 33, verse 19. Read. Right. Give not thy son and wife, thy brother and friend, power over thee while thou livest. Read. Right. And give not thy goods to another, lest it repent thee, and thou entreat for the same again. You see what it's saying? It says, don't give power. To your son, your wife, your brother, your friend, 
while you're still alive. You understand? I Meaning, don't be disclosing, no, I've got a life insurance, I've got a funeral cover, I've got a this. No, don't say nothing like that. Just be quiet. Shut the hell up. Okay? Don't say nothing. Simp. Don't say nothing. Because if you speak, you see this woman, Nomi Androvu, she will do you the way that this woman is doing. You understand? Because she wants to get paid. She wants millions. Okay? Now watch this. Jump down. You keep reading. Read verse 20. Verse 20. As long as thou livest and hast breath in thee, give not thyself over to any. Meaning what? Don't be disclosing all these stuff that you are doing, the, the, the savings and stuff. Don't say nothing. Don't say I'm saving money. You know, don't be saying stuff like that. You understand? And how much it is. You know, that, that, that's what simp do. They do stuff like that. When you come into this too, don't be a simp. Yes, in the world you could have done that. You've been doing that. But now when you come in Islam, you start to learn. You start to what? To put a what? To put a, to put a bandage on your mouth, on your lips. Remember Micah 7. Okay, always remember Micah 7. Jump down to verse, 20, to verse 23 now. Read verse 23. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 33, verse 23. Read. At the time when thou shalt end thy days. Meaning when you die. Read. And finish thy life. When you die, go ahead. Distribute thine inheritance. He says, distribute your inheritance. You see, you see what he says, at the time when thou shalt end thy days and finish thy life. Now, meaning what? You must put a will, you must put a will together, you understand? And you're going to distribute your inheritance before you die. Or the will will what? The world will make sure that everybody gets their inheritance after you're gone. But while you're still alive, don't be saying this stuff. Just be quiet. You understand? Stay in the spirit. Have discretion. Because the laws of God will teach you that. Give me Luke 12, verse 13. Luke chapter 12, verse 13. Because these women, you understand, that was we are seeing here, this woman, Nomi and Joe. Because the case have been, have been watching a case very close. Okay. Watch this. Luke 12, verse 13. Read what you got. The book of Luke, chapter 12, verse 13. Come on. And one of the company said unto him, Master, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. So now this brother, he wants Christ to get involved in the inheritance that was left for them. You understand? Insurance. Okay, go ahead. And he said unto him, Man, who made me a judge or a divider over you? He said, Christ said, listen, don't get me involved in that stuff. Don't get me involved. Who made me a judge or divider over you? Because this brother, he came to Christ because guess what? He had the spirit of covetousness. So he wanted Christ to what? To make the, to force the other brother to be able to share the inheritance with him. You understand? Read. And he said unto them, take heed and beware of covetousness. You see what Christ did? Christ left him where he was standing. He left the brother where he was standing. And he said unto them, who said them? The disciples. It's like this brother goes to Christ. He tells Christ, listen, be, be a divider over me and my brother for the inheritance that was left for us. Then Christ, he says, he says what? Who made me a judge and divider over you? Meaning I don't get me involved. Then Christ walks away. Then he tells the disciples, watch that guy right there. Okay? He says, take heed and be of covetousness. That guy is covetous. That's what's going on here. Go ahead. For a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. He says, don't focus on that. You are focusing on the wrong stuff. That's what Christ is telling him. But guess what? This woman, Nomi Androu, she what? She is covetous. Unum hopol. Watch this. Give me Hebrews 13 verse 5. The book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 5. Come on. Let your conversation be without covetousness. Mm -hmm. And be content with such things as ye have. Be satisfied with the things that you have. This woman was not satisfied. She has a job. You know, she has got a government job. She is a police woman. Okay, come on. For he has said, 
I will never leave thee, for nor forsake thee. If this is what Christ said, I'm not going to leave you, nor forsake you. I got you. I'm going to take care of you. You understand? But this woman, her conversation was fulfilled with covetousness because she was covetous. Now, let's play on now. Because we dealt with a couple of things. We dealt with murder. We dealt with premeditated murder, which is poisoning, hiring a hitman. You understand? For the insurance money. Okay? And moreover, meaning killing the victims with fire so that it looked like an accident. Okay? That's what this woman is doing. Poisoning, hitman, hiring a hitman, you understand, setting the, the victims on fire and getting the insurance money, claiming the insurance money. Okay? Let's play on. And Glovu has asked the hitman to meet her at this hospital in Midrand, which she has booked herself in with an unknown condition. So what she's doing is she's creating an alibi so that when the, the investigations are done, they're going to say, no, but she was not even in Mbopo. You know, Stan? she was at the hospital. Okay. Police say she did this to create her own alibi so that she is not suspected of her sister's death later that evening. She arranges a day pass with the hospital and the hitman and undercover cop pick her up outside. You see what she's saying? This woman, listen, this woman, she's been planning this stuff. Is that they're not going to be planning no DNAs and all of that because the victims are known. It's her family members. You understand? After a short distance, they stop at this Middleburg petrol station. Glovu buys two liters of petrol, costing 29 rand, and hands it to the undercover police officer. This, she says, is what they must use to murder her sister and her five children by burning down the house. They continue driving, and Glovu points out the house. He says, this is the sister, this is this black ashy demon. He says, when a house, when that when a house bends, it can it can even be an ex-boyfriend who sets it alight. A fire can be caused by anything, even an electrical fault. So this must be an accident. You understand? It says, not much attention is given to fire cases, but when it comes to guns and knives, those deaths, they investigate. Because she's a policewoman, she knows how, the, how this is done. So she's very selective on what type of um, techniques she uses to murder her victims so she can claim from the insurance, okay? Uh, they assume you wanted to murder the person and the and then it backfires when you need to play so she knows this stuff she she's done this before okay because guns and knives that's listen they have to investigate but if it's a fire it's gonna be deemed as an accident most of the time so true. So he says, then they, then they, meaning the insurance companies, is they don't pay when it's guns and knives. He says, uh, this is the undercover policeman now. He says. So will the policies also pay out for her children or meaning uh, now he's fine, he's asking because, well, yes, the insurance will pay, but will the insurance money, will, or will it also cover the children as well? Now she says it won't pay out for the children, only for her, but they cannot be left behind since they will be there too. Meaning what? 
Remember, it says she's hardened against her young ones. She don't care about the kids. Okay. He says, and you know that sparing them will mean leaving behind witnesses. So when a house bends down, everyone bends with it. This woman is the devil. This woman, she is the devil. Give me that in Sarah 25. Sarah 25 is 19 again. Because I want you to see the scripture in its proper essence here. Okay, read it. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 25, verse 19. Read. All wickedness is but little to the wickedness of a woman. You see what the Bible is saying? It says all wickedness is but little to the wickedness of a woman. That's what you are seeing it right here in real time. You understand? I hey, Yes, and no one will ever know whether it was a candle, a boyfriend, or whether something exploded in the house. Or whether she was burning the stuff she got from the traditional healers. You get me meaning what? Let's create a narrative. Hmm? She requests to be taken back to the taxi rank to return to hospital before the men carry out their attack. So now she has to leave them in Bukpa Grish and then she goes back. She's going to go back and be where? At the hospital. Hmm. However, before she can leave, she is arrested. Three years later, and Nglovu is now in the middle of the multiple murder trial against her in Palm Ridge High Court. The state has rested their case against the former policewoman, and Nglovu has pleaded not guilty to all the charges against her. Her defense is set to begin in mid-September 2021. You see now, the Lord is coming down on her now. You understand? Because she thought she was going to get away with this stuff. Because she was the sister, when you were, when you look at on Twitter, she would be taking selfies and all of that. Like this is some kind of a joke. Okay. This is Rosemary Nglovu, a former police officer from Tembisa, Gauteng. In our previous video we produced on this accused multiple murderer, we explained how this undercover footage of this former policewoman sitting in this car came to be, and we have placed a link in the description for that video. However, more undercover footage has been revealed. This, this is the third video now. Watch this. It reveals more details of the former Tembisa policewoman allegedly telling a hitman how to kill her sister and her sister's five young children. It is not for sensitive viewers. <laughs> So this is the undercover cop now. He says, relax, tell me what it, what it is that you want us to do. This is what it says. You see now, this is the plot. He says, you can go in, strangle them, mm, and then burn them. But stabbing and shooting, no, it's not common there. So she's been planning this stuff for a while. So this man, these men must walk in and, and, be, and strangle the kids and the sister, and then set the house on fire. This is some evil stuff here. Yeah. But it says burning and strangling them. That is number one. Those two things. Number one. Mm. Number one. Just look at this face of this woman. Mm. Give me that in Sarak. Okay. Give me that in Sarak. Sarak chapter 25 verse 17. Read that. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 25 verse 17. Read. The wickedness of a woman changeth her face. Look at her face. Look at her face. She's got demons on her. It says the wickedness of a woman changeth her face. Read. 
and darkeneth her countenance like sackcloth. Now her face has been darkened. You can see that this woman is full of demons. You understand? She's full of deceit. She's full of evil and madness is in her mind. This woman is crazy. You understand? And, but she knows exactly what she's doing. But she's got the devil on her. Understand that? Mama, no money. Mama. Huh? Hitman in the hitman in the back seat. How many of them are there? I want to win and turn back to five. He says it's here and her five children. The mom and her kids. The children are all young. The youngest even isn't isn't even a year old. You can't make this stuff up. I mean, this is unbelievable. Okay. <laughs> It's like she's talking about somebody in jail. You, you see what she's done? She's basically spiritually disconnected herself from what she's about to do. It's like she's not talking about her sister. You understand? He says, I will give her pill. You know, she's going to meet with her sister. He says, I will give her these pills and tell her that these pills will help her. Because which means the sister, she was, she, she's got chronic conditions and so forth. Okay. And she's the policewoman. You know, the people in the rural areas, they always believe the people that live in Jovek. You know, this medication, it works, you know, so on and so forth. Yeah. So she's been investigating, plotting and planning and scheming. Okay. I will tell her that they should take them at night since they make one sleepy and then you guys can go in. Hmm. After a two hour drive, they stop at this petrol station where Nglovu buys two liters of petrol. And Glover told the police that she had booked herself into a hospital in Midrand so that when her sister was killed later that evening, she would have an alibi. I will be back in hospital. I will be clean like someone who knows nothing. She's done this before, okay? Once I get the news, I will get discharged, rush back home and start pre prepping for the funeral and then I claim. Mm. Next week, the money will be in by next week, probably by Friday. This is the undercover cop now. So when will be when we when so we will be sorted by next week. We will be well taken care of. Definitely, just go and make sure you do the job well.
undercover cop. It means you will take us to Caesar's palace. This is palace. This is bomb. But please don't use guns and knives. Using those things will result in the money not being paid out. That is a village. Those kinds of deaths aren't common. So he says, if anyone gets shot in the villages, it's usually a businessman. So a fire is the best. So she's. So, what you just witnessed is the demonic, ashy black woman who never, who never held accountable for her behavior. You understand? That's why you see the black women, our sisters, they are so relaxed. You understand? The black man is always being, is always put on blast all the time. You understand? But the prophets are back and we black. You understand? Watch this. Now, let's deal with the next case now. Okay, let's deal with the next case. This is our third video on the four. Okay, no, 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 still no. Okay, this is number three. Let's keep going. The police officer Rosemary Glover's alleged confessions inside an undercover cop's car. To catch up on the case of the alleged multiple murderer, be sure to check out our prior two videos on the matter, which are linked in the description. In this video, we uncover a clip from 2018 inside the undercover police officer's car, where Rosemary and Glovo allegedly explains to a hitman in the back seat how easy it is to steal a gun from the police station where she worked in Tembisa, Gauteng. <laughs> So she's teaching them how to steal uh, guns from the police custody. Hmm. It works best when I'm not the one working at the safe. I just take the keys, steal it, and afterwards I throw it in the hole at the at the at the back. I will then call you and say, Njabulu, alleged hitman, go fetch it. It will be dark since it will be at night. So, which means that a lot of these gangsters that you see in the gases and all of that, they are working with these black ashy police men and women that don't love the job, they don't do the job, they are corrupt. That's where they get access to these guns, some of them, because that's what we're seeing here. You understand? This means we have a good contact in you. You said inside woman. This revelation happened just one hour after she had met the hitman and an undercover cop who she was allegedly taking to Bushbuck Ridge to show them where her sister lived. Allegedly, she thought she was hiring these hitmen to kill her sister and her sister's five young children in order to get a payout from funeral and life insurance policies. <laughs> The case continues in the Palm Ridge High Court, where Rosemary. So this is the black, ashy, demonic, murderous black woman. That's what you are looking at here. The woman that was taking selfies, you understand, for the past couple of months. Yeah, she's been doing that. This black, ashy demon right here. Glovu is testifying in her defense. She has denied all the allegations against her. Mm. Unbelievable. So now here's another case right here. There's another case right here. 
Now, this, this case has been in the news as well, where a black woman killed, she poisoned three of the kids. She killed them all. She poisoned them. You understand? And she attempted to kill herself. The Lord said, no, 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 no. You're going to be alive to see this stuff. An account. Okay? Watch this. One death is one too many. The death of four innocent children unimaginable. It's December 2018. Instead of celebrating the festive season, the Merita family is preparing for a funeral. We were enjoying ourselves and having fun. And she came back and we left to go to another house. She stayed there with the kids. She seemed fine. Yeah, she never seemed depressed. Not knowing how she was, was felt, but physically, so we saw her, but she looks fine. And we, and we must have everything because they're so young, they had a whole life for, for them, and they passed great, and she can't even know it's difficult. They were playing around here, and ah, it's, it's, the family is trying to cope, but it's a great loss because it's not even one or two or three, it's four kids, and from one family. Ah. Eight year old Minente. Six-year-old Blessing, four-year-old Shaniqua, mm -hmm. and 11-month-old Ethan were last seen alive on Christmas Day last year. 11 months. Days later, a foul smell from this rented room led to a gruesome discovery and the arrest of their mother, Zintle Marita. So this is the, this is the murderous, ashy black woman right here who killed her four kids. This woman right here. Mm. She handed herself over to the police. Marita confessed to the murders, saying she lost it, as she described it. That's after she found her lover and the father of two of her children with another woman. And the police. You notice that they are giving reasons. Whenever the black women, they commit these heinous crimes, they always be given reasons why they are doing it to justify their wicked behavior. But the last week one that we were dealing with, oh, Sandile Mantue, when he killed Karabo, there was no psychological reason that was given for his behavior. But when the black woman does it, there's always psychological hang-ups that she's suffering from to justify her behavior. You notice the pattern? Mm -hmm. Marita confessed to the murders, saying she lost it, as she described it. That's after she found her lover and the father of two of her children with another woman. Heinrich Combined Family, Community, Yasemana Hemi Yonke. Could you give me that in Proverbs chapter 6, verse 17? You can't make this stuff up. You just cannot. Give me that in Proverbs 6, verse 17. Mm -hmm. Start with 16 again. Read it. The book of Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16. Read. Right. These six things doth the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. Come on. A proud look, mm. a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. That's exactly what happened here. You understand? A lying tongue, I lost it. You understand? All kind of demonic excuses and hands that shed innocent blood. She killed all these four children in cold blood. You see that thing? Give me that in Trust 32 real quick. Okay, Trust 32 verse 17. Okay, a lying tongue. There's always a reason why she's doing it. Why she did it. Okay, Trust 32 verse 17. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 32 verse 17. Okay. A sinful man 
will not be reproved, mm -hmm. but findeth an excuse according to his will. But findeth an excuse according to his will. Now, those are just excuses here. Okay, me, I'm not hearing nothing. Okay. I greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. It's really so difficult to stand here today in a situation like this. Thank you. A psychiatric evaluation deemed Marita fit to stand trial. So now they are doing psych evals. They are doing psychological evaluations. What for? Hmm? We're looking at what the person's mental state is at the moment in terms You see that thing? Listen, this system, right? That's the reason why the black woman continues to... I mean, you never see, you never see news where the black woman is actually put on blast for all the murders that she's committing. The children that are given birth, they are thrown in the in the waters. Some are put in, in, in they are boiled because they be boiling their kids, throwing them in the ocean, throwing them in dustbins. Hmm? No psychological, no, they are poor. There's always some reason. And who's always giving those reasons? A woman is always giving those reasons. You understand? Hmm. Being able to go to court and give an account for her, of herself in terms of what happened at the time of the offence and what's happening now. I was hurt by this. Before the trial could even get underway, Madita admitted guilt. I took out the red poison that I bought and mixed it with archer. I took out bread and dished for my three children to eat. I also dished for myself and I ate with them. I took the remainder of the poison, mixed it with yogurt, and smeared it on my breast and breastfed my 11-month-old baby from the same breast. Are you kidding me? Man, this is some evil stuff. This woman, she took red poison, mixed it with archer, gave to the kids. Now you have an 11-month-old baby. Yogurt, red poison, she put it on her breast to kill an 11-month-old baby. No conscience whatsoever, right? Oh, my God, man. Give me that in uh, Deuteronomy 28, verse 56. Mm, this thing is vexing my spirit here, okay? Deuteronomy 28, verse 56. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 56. Read. The tender and delicate woman among you. Because that's Which how our sisters, hold on, that's how our women was back then. Now, they are alpha females and they are masculine. Okay, read. Which would not adventure to set the sole of their foot upon the ground for delicateness and tenderness. Because that's uh, how feminine they, hold on, that's how feminine they were. Okay, not today's black woman. Okay, we love our sisters, but we will bring the truth as it is written. Go ahead. Her eye shall be evil towards the husband of her bosom. That's exactly what happened to Nomi and Lo. She killed the boyfriend, stabbed 80 times. Okay? This woman right here, guess what she's doing? Read the next part of that verse. Go ahead. And towards her son and towards her daughter. You see that thing? It says, her eye shall be evil towards the husband of her bosom and toward her son and her toward her daughter. That's what she did. She killed her kids, four of them. You understand? Because their eye was evil towards her kids. She didn't care or love her kids. She had hatred for her children. Now that right there, that's some evil demonic ish. Okay, watch this. Give me the book of Luke 21 verse 23. Because she said she put she took yogurt and mixed it with red poison and put it on her breasts. Okay, watch this. Luke 21, verse 23. Read that. The book of Luke, chapter 21, verse 23. Go ahead. But woe unto them that are with child. Do you hear what the Bible is saying? But woe, meaning destruction unto them that are with child. 
the same women that we were reading about in Deuteronomy 28, verse 56. Go ahead. And to them that give suck in those days. And to them that do what? And to them that give suck in those days. And to them that give suck in those days. Because this woman gave suck to her young one, but the nipples, her breast, was filled with, was smeared with poison to kill the 11th month old baby. That's why Christ is saying, woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. Go ahead. For there shall be great distress in the land. Mm -hmm. There shall be great distress in the land. Go ahead. And wrath upon this people. And wrath upon these people. That's what you are seeing right now. Christ is prophesying what their sisters are going to do. Because this, this scripture is twofold. But guess what? It also applies to this situation right here with this woman. Give me Proverbs chapter 6, verse 34. Okay, Proverbs 6, verse 34. Read that. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 34. Because remember what she said. She said she saw the husband, or the, I don't know if it's the husband or the boyfriend, was with, in bed with another woman. Okay. Look at the, 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 the chain reaction. Look what happens next, what she did. She says she lost it. Watch this. Proverbs 6, verse 34. But the kids has nothing to do with this. I don't know why she's getting the kids involved in this. Okay, come on. The book of Proverbs, chapter 6, verse 34. Great. Right. For jealousy is the rage of a man. Jealousy is the rage of a man. She was enraged with what? Jealousy. Go ahead. Therefore, he will not spare in the day of vengeance. That's exactly what you see now. She didn't spare her own children in the day of vengeance. She did not spare her own kids. That's what we read in Deuteronomy. That's what we read in the book of Luke. Okay, come on. He will not regard any ransom. Any ransom. She will not. He did not regard any ransom. Any, no mercy for the kids. None of that. Wait. Neither. Will he rest content? He's not going to be, because she was not content until she had to do something. You understand? Really? Though thou givest many gifts. Meaning what? Even if you try to calm them down, say, no, we are sorry and all of that, she's not going to hear that. She did not hear that. So now she took all of that out on the kids. Because that's the, that's the excuse, quote-unquote, that's being used here for her wicked, demonic behavior. Okay? What's this? Give me Proverbs. Go back to Proverbs. You know what? Hmm. Give me Sarah 19, verse 25. We read Proverbs already. Okay. Give me Sarah 19, verse 25. Okay. Pay closer. Just look at the picture of the sister and listen to the script. Watch this. Sarah 19, verse 25. Let's read that. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 19, verse 25. Go ahead. There is an exquisite subtlety. Hmm. And the same is unjust. So he says there's an exquisite subtlety, meaning the, 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 the evil is very subtle. You understand? So much so you can't see it, but it's there. He says the same is unjust, meaning unlawful, ungodly, evil. Read. And there is one that turneth aside to make judgment appear. That's exactly what she did. She made judgment appear by killing those kids. Read. And there is a wise man that justifies in judgment. Next verse, come on. There is a wicked man that hangeth down his head, sadly. That's what this woman is doing. She's hanging her, her head down, sadly. But read on. But inwardly, he is full of deceit. But inwardly, she was full of deceit. You understand? This was premeditated murder that she committed. Go ahead. Casting down his countenance and making as if he had not. Mm -hmm. Where he is not known, he will do thee a mischief before thou be away. Because they didn't know what she was doing or what she was planning to do after that thing happened. Nobody knew and nobody knew where the kids was until they had the smell that because all the kids now they are gone. You understand? Read. And if for want of power he be hindered from sinning, 
Yet when he findeth opportunity, he will do evil. When she found opportunity to kill the kids, she put the children to death. Premeditated murder. Okay, give me Ezekiel 16, verse 45. Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 45. The book of Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 45. Come on. Behold, everyone that uses mm -hmm. Proverbs. Verse 45, verse 45. Verse 45. Mm -hmm. Thou art thy mother's daughter that, that loveth her, her husband and that her loatheth, children. That loatheth, meaning she hates her husband and her children. Read that again. Verse 45, Ezekiel. Come on. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 40, 41, verse 45. No, no, chapter 16, verse 45. Come on. Chapter 16, verse 45. Read. Thou art thy mother's daughter that loatheth her husband and her children. You see what that, you see that part of it? Hold on. It says, she loatheth her husband and her children. So she hated what that man did so much so that she decided, I'm going to take all the children's lives now. She will not spare in the day of vengeance. That's what you are seeing here. You understand? That is what you are seeing here. Go ahead. And thou art the sister of thy sisters, which loatheth their husbands and their children. And their what? And their children. And their children. That's what you are seeing here. Hatred of the kids. Go ahead. Your mother was, was an Hittite. Mm -hmm. And your father an Amorite. You see that thing? Now the Lord is kissing us out by using by calling us the by calling us Hamites. You understand? Because what she did was a sacrifice that she performed. Give me that in Psalms 106, verse 34. Psalms 106, verse 34. He says we're Hamites because he's calling us Hamites, he's cursing us out because the things that we are doing. Guess what? You know what? Hmm, something just jumped on me. Give me that in Jeremiah 7 real quick. Mm, watch this. No, Jeremiah 4, verse 21. Watch this thing. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 4, verse 21. Go ahead. How long shall I see the standard? And hear mm -hmm. the sound of the trumpet. The standard is the trumpet, which is the Bible. How long until the Lord returns? Go ahead. For my people is foolish. God says we are stupid, we're dumb. He says, for my people is foolish. Go ahead. They have not known me. We are not keeping the commandments. That's why you see all these heinous crimes that are being committed by the black women. Read on. They are sottish children. We have dumb children, slow babies. Go ahead. And they have none understanding. Because we're not keeping the commandments as a nation. Read. They are wise to do evil. You see that part right there? They are wise to do evil. Look at the plan. Look at the level of planning that goes into this. The level of planning. You understand? Look at what the Nomian drove. But she, cause she got convicted now because I look as I saw the news, she got convicted. But look at what's going on. The Lord is saying, Our people, He says, we are wise to do evil. We have the wisdom to do evil. That's why you see the evils that the black woman is doing. Likewise, the black man is doing. Wise to do evil. We have the wisdom to do evil. That's why we can cook up things. You know, look at the nyawube, that thing is cooked the way that is cooked together. That's wisdom to do evil. You understand? Keep going. Read the next part of that verse. Read. But to do good, they have no knowledge. But to do good, they have no knowledge. Meaning to keep the laws of God, they have that they have no knowledge of keeping God's commandments. Because the souls that are committing all these murders, they are no good. Give me that in Proverbs 19, verse 2. Read it. Book of Proverbs, chapter 19, verse 2. Also, that the 
soul be without knowledge? You see that? So all these women that are committing all these horrific murders is because their soul has no knowledge. Because they are wise to do evil, but to do good, they have no knowledge. They don't have the laws of God to walk uprightly. Go ahead. It is not good. And he that, ha that hasteth with his feet sinneth. You see, they hasted with their feet to commit murder, premeditated murder. Because the Lord is saying that, that their soul be without knowledge, it is not good. Because they are without knowledge, but they are wise. They have wisdom to do evil. You understand? That's what we're seeing right here. Give me Psalms 106 verse 34 now. Read that. The book of Psalms chapter 106 verse 34. Read. They did not destroy the, nation, the nations concerning whom the Lord commanded them. Because that's when we entered into what? The land of Canaan, right? But were mingled among the heathen and learned their works. That's exactly what we are, that's what we are seeing here. Killing of children, sacrifice, because that's the sacrifice they are performing. You understand? Premeditated murder to get insurance money. Guess what? These are sacrifices, unjust sacrifices committed by these women. Right? And they served their idols, which mm -hmm. were a snare unto them. You see that? Idolatry. Worshipping of idols. From the time of Genesis, that's why we went into Genesis chapter 3, what our foremother Eve did. Idolatry. You understand? Is a gateway for all these evils that you see now. Read. Yea, they sacrificed their sons mm -hmm. and their daughters unto devils. That's what you are seeing here. Four children being put to death, being poisoned. You understand? And guess what? That poison is not like you, you are just out, life out. No, it's a painful, slow death. Okay? What level of cruelty you have to have in your, in your mind to do evil stuff like this? Okay? Go ahead. Verse 38. And shed innocent blood, even Mom. the blood of their sons and of their daughters. Whom they sacrificed unto the idols of Canaan. Mm -hmm. And the land was polluted with blood. That's what you are seeing right now. They're shedding innocent blood. They are killing innocent blood. And the blood of their sons and their daughters. Who they are sacrificed unto these idols. You understand? And now the land is polluted with blood. When you look at the millions upon millions of these babies. That are being put to death by black women. Listen. The government don't say nothing about that. Your Julius Malemas, they are quiet. Your Cyril Ramaphosas, they are quiet. Bull Hemen Mashaba, they don't say nothing. Bull Musima Imani, they say nothing. All of them are quiet. They don't want to address these ills in our communities that the black woman is doing. They don't want to say nothing. That's why the black woman is at ease right now. Why? Because of what? Give me that in Isaiah 32 now, verse 9. Okay, watch this. Of Isaiah chapter 32, verse 9. Wait. Rise up, ye women that are at ease. Hear my voice, ye careless daughters. Give ear unto my speech. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, Rise up, you women that are at ease. Why is the black woman at ease? Because the black woman is not never held accountable for the demonic demonic abominable acts that she's doing killing of our sons and daughters you understand premeditated men all the evil killing of these boyfriends that they have they are never held accountable that's why they are at ease that's why the lord is saying rise up you women that are at ease wake the hell up you women that are at ease the reason why they are at ease because the black woman never gets held accountable for the stuff that she does and black women don't hold other black women accountable you understand that's why they are at ease to what? To continue to do these evil acts and don't nobody say nothing. Read that again. Verse 9. Come on. The book of Isaiah, chapter 32, verse 9. Read. Rise up, ye women that are at ease. Hear my voice, ye careless daughters. Give ear unto my speech. 
Give ear unto my unto the, the speech of the most high, meaning the laws of God. Let's get come on. Many days and years shall you be troubled. That was going on now. They are being troubled right now. You understand? And who's gonna trouble them? We are going to trouble them. We are have to put the we have to report these things in the spirit of Christ. We have to sound the alarm. We have to hold up the standard. You understand? Right? Ye careless woman. Because they are careless. They don't care. That's why they commit all these gruesome matters. And guess what? The news, the white woman, the news media, they say, no, they, are, they have psychological hangups. But when the black man does it, the black woman is flooding the streets. Now the black woman is doing it. You don't see black women flooding the streets. You don't see that. Okay. Ray, the level of hypocrisy. Okay. Go ahead. For the vintage shall fail. The vintage will fail. Meaning what? The vintage, the Bible will fail them. Because they don't want to hear it. Because the Bible is a book of law, order, and correction. The black women don't want that thing. Go ahead. The gathering shall not come. The gathering shall not come. For the black woman to what? To get her mind right. Because she's always doing what? She's always cursing the prophets out. Because they are the main ones. When we go to the streets, they have a big mouth. They always have something to say against the prophets of the Lord. Read on. Tremble. You women that are at ease. The Lord is telling the black woman, he says, tremble, you better be afraid. Tremble, you women that are at ease. Go ahead. Be troubled, you careless ones. Be troubled, you careless women of Israel. Read. Strip ye and make ye bare. Meaning what? Have shame. Read. And gird sackcloth upon your loins. Meaning what? Have some shame. Because right now, they are shameless daughters of Israel. You understand? They are shameless. That's why they commit all these crimes and they think what? They think, no, it's all good. But no, it's not all good. And nobody's reporting it because the Judah mourners, the gays, they have language. That's why nobody's reporting it. But the, pro the prophets are there. Them days are over, okay? We're going to shut it down. Watch this. Let's keep playing the video. She took to the stand and begged for mercy. But this wasn't enough. The most aggravating factor in this matter is that the accused is the biological mother of these children. These four children suffered gruesome death at the, hand, at the hands of a mother who was supposed to nurture and protect and provide for them. These innocent children were the victims of her battles with Shongwe. These children trusted like any, any other child in their mother. And when they were hungry, they believed that she'll provide for them. And when she gave them food, she intentionally gave them food that was contaminated with the intention to kill them. She betrayed her own children. That's right. And as a result, these young, little, innocent children suffered a horrible death. That's right. Having consumed the poison, they did not die immediately. They suffered a prolonged, painful death. What is most disturbing is this, this act took place at their home, which place was supposed to be their safe haven in the company of their mother. Under the circumstances, I am of the considered view that the life imprisonment on each of the murder counts is the appropriate sentence. You see that thing? Life imprisonment, meaning what? She's getting four life sentences. 
four. Four life sentences. You understand? There is a God. Watch this. Give me the book of Amos 4. Give me Amos 4 verse 11. Watch this. The book of Amos chapter 4 verse 11. Read. Right. I have overthrown some of you as God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay, no, no, no. You're not reading correctly. Come on, stay with me. Read verse, four, read verse 11 again. Amos 4 verse 11. Come on. The book of Amos chapter 4 verse 11. Read. Really? I have overthrown some of you as God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. Come on. And you were a firebrand plucked out of the burning. Read. Really? Yet, yet have you not returned unto me, said the Lord. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, I have overthrew some of you as I overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah, and you were as firebrand plucked out of the burning. You understand? Now the Lord is saying, listen, I delivered you, he says, yet ye have not returned unto me, saith the Lord. Even with the judgment of Sodom and Gomorrah, you still don't want to get your mind right. Watch the next verse. Go ahead. Therefore, thus will I do unto thee, O Israel, Mm -hmm. it's, listen, and God is saying, listen, this is what I'm going to do to you now, you Israelites. Watch this. Come on. And because I will do this unto thee, mm -hmm. prepare to meet thy God, O Israel. Yeah, the most I don't play games. He says, you're going to meet your God now. You're going to know me now. You ever see your father? He says, okay. Your mother telling you, okay, you don't want to listen to me? Don't worry. Prepare to meet your father when he comes home. That's what the Lord is saying right here about himself. He says, prepare to meet your God, O Israel. Meaning what? I'm coming for you. You understand? The most I don't play games. But what I'm showing you is that the Bible is a true book. Okay? The Bible is a true. All these things that you see happening in the earth, in our communities, you can find them written in this Bible. You understand? You can find them written in the book. Why would a mother, a nurturer and protector, kill her own children? Some research suggests that in many, if not most cases, the women are suffering from mental illnesses. You see that? You cannot, listen, you can't make this up. She's suffering from mental illness. That's why she did this. Unbelievable. Okay. The reason why I'm saying this is because I'm looking at the level of hypocrisy when it comes to black men that are be killing babies, killing the women. I'm not saying they are right. They are completely, they are wrong. Let me say that, okay? They are wrong. You understand? Give me that in Exodus 20. In case they think, no, I support that. I don't support that garbage. Read that in Exodus 20. Thou shalt not kill. Read that. 20 verse 13. The book of Exodus chapter 20 verse 13. Read. Thou shalt not kill. You see that then? We agree with this. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not murder. We don't agree with that. But what I am showing is that, watch this. Give me that in um, Isaiah. Okay. Give me Isaiah real quick. Mm. Isaiah 32 verse 6. Of Isaiah chapter 32, verse 6. Read. For the vile person will speak will speak villainly. So the vile person will speak villainly. The vile person goes into the politicians and all that. You understand? The media. They speak villainy. Go ahead. And his heart will work iniquity. They are working iniquity on how they present the news. You know, some news favor others. And some use they don't favor others. Go ahead. To practice hypocrisy. That's what the media is doing. They are practicing hypocrisy. They are presenting a certain narrative to the public. That's why when you see, we see that you look at the statistics of black women killing our babies, our sons and daughters through abortion and all that. Guess what? You don't see the uproar by the black women doing on the streets about that. Because the media is pushing a specific narrative to do what? To make sure that when the black man does it, you know, he does some evil, 
you will see the whole the whole country will be in an uproar. But when black women do, do it, you don't see nothing. You don't hear anything. The media don't report it because they are practicing hypocrisy. That's what the Bible is telling us here. You understand? That's what we're seeing here. All right. The insanity defense kind of clicks in. There must be a mental illness that is sufficient for the person to not be able to appreciate that what they're doing is wrong. Serious mental illnesses like psychotic disorders, like schizophrenia, uh, severe mood disorders, bipolar disorder. But in other cases, social, emotional and biological factors have also been cited. One of the most influential classifications of child murders was created in the 70s by Philip Resnick. Mm, the white man, because they are natural born killers, so they can come up with stuff like this. You understand? There's a woman, I think is in Australia, there's a case going on, a white woman who killed her three kids. You understand? And she's not pleading guilty. And they are what? Psychological hang-ups. That's the reason, that's the reason that they are coming up with. You see that? Mm -hmm. He developed five categories. Altruistic filicide, acutely psychotic filicide, unwanted child filicide, accidental filicide, and spouse revenge filicide. Mm. Some of the research that we are doing now here in South Africa at Stokefontein Hospital and Vitz University is to rather move our focus from why to asking the question how. Hmm. Meaning don't ask why she's doing it. No, no, no. The Bible tells you wickedness. Okay, watch this. Because they will come with, they will bring all these psychological, scientific terms and all that. Watch this. Give me first Timothy 6 real quick. Okay. We deal with what the Bible says. To hell with Esau's witchcraft that he calls science. First Timothy 6, verse 20. We were to go. First book of Timothy, chapter 6, verse 20. Mm -hmm. Oh, Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust. Read. Avoiding profane and vain babblings. Go ahead. And oppositions of science falsely so-called you see that thing is as avoid profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so-called all these filicide 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 listen the bible says those are oppositions of what oppositions of science because their science opposes the bible you understand because if so give me that in psalms 94 they're gonna what they're coming up with all these terms that's why that woman in Australia, that Edomite woman, she killed her three kids. She's not pleading guilty. Psalms 94 verse 20. Watch this. The book of Psalms, chapter 94, verse 20. Mm -hmm. Come on. Hey, what's going on? You don't know where the book of Psalms is? Read that thing. Come on. Psalms 94 verse 20. Let's go. Of Psalms chapter 94, verse 20. Go ahead. Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee, mm -hmm. which frameth mischief by a law? You see what the Bible is saying? It says, Shall the throne of iniquity, who the throne of meaning the throne of sin, the kingdom, because that's what the throne is, a kingdom. Shall the kingdom of sin, which is America, you understand, which is really the whole earth. Shall it have fellowship with, with the most high? No, because they are framing mischief by a law. All these filicide that you see they are mentioning here, all of that is mischief. 
but they but they they bring they put it into law and they are not doing it for our benefit they are doing it for them because that's what they do so they can get away with murder you understand that's why they be bringing all these philly side philly side philly whatever listen read that again verse 20. the book of psalms chapter 94 verse 20. Read. shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee mm -hmm. which frameth mischief by a law they frame mischief by a law so they use mischief to put it into law and to justify their wickedness that's why it says they are practicing hypocrisy that's what they are doing and they use the media to do that you understand so we are asking what psychological, what emotional processes and what um, social circumstances and... Oh, they see that part right there. Social circumstances. You know what that translates into? Poverty. That's why they say legal abortion because they say no, because of your social economic uh, circumstances, they are allowed to commit abortions because they are poor. No, no. And then they're going to say, and then in the future... The statistics they're going to bring up, they're going to say, no, abortion is because of what? Is because of poverty and um, lack of um, economic, you know, economy. you're living in a low economic estate. No, the Bible tells you why they commit abortions, why they kill our kids, is because of adultery and idolatry. That's why they commit these abortions. It's got nothing to do with money. Let me get that. Ezekiel 23, 37. Money has nothing to do with it. Okay, read it. Come on, Ezekiel 23. Read what you got. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 23, verse 37. Come on. That they have committed adultery and blood is in their hands. You see that thing? They commit adultery and blood is in their hands. The blood of these innocent kids that they are put into death. Read. And with their idols have they committed adultery. You see that thing? You've got ad adultery. You've got idolatry. You understand? You've got murder. Read. And have also caused their sons, whom they bear unto me, to pass for them through the fire to devour them. You see that? So it's got nothing to do with poverty, but everything to do with adultery, idolatry and murder that's why they commit these abortions it's got nothing to do with poverty or social circumstances no these are the reasons that iso is giving the black woman to get away with murder they are giving them license to what to kill that's what's going on and the anc supports that because that's what we saw you read the the history you read how the ANC's, anc's policy framework yes they put that thing into law you understand the Termination of Pregnancy Act of 1996, yes, that's what they've done, okay? In terms of processes, underpin the act of committing such an offence. This will be the Marita family's first Christmas without the children. And while she serves her four life sentences, Zintle Marita will have to live with the guilt for the rest of her life. <laughs> The ANC's Nobile Majala caught up with the family's nanny of 10 years, Mendis Banyon. Pika is still in shock after the... Here's another one. This one murdered three children. That one murdered four. This one, she murdered three. News from New Zealand of a South African mother who is alleged to have murdered three of her kids. Uh, somebody close to the family will be joining me now to speak to us. Mandy Sibanyoni, you know these kids very well. Perhaps tell us a bit about the kids. Uh, I raised uh, Lauren's kids, the twins, uh, Carla and Maya, and there was Liane in the house. So we came close to me and Liane and the kids. And like as they were growing, they used to know me very well. And we used to play and we used to take a walk. And when they, I come, when they started talking, and when I entered the house, they will say, Oh, Mandy's here. And I used to call them my sausages and everything, my angels. So they were happy when they were seeing me. They were seeing an angel because 
this thing of mine of being a nanny it's in the blood and like oh yes this is the one i was talking about not australia new zealand this is the white woman this is the womb the white woman who killed her three kids and she pleaded not guilty because of some psychological hang-up decanson decanson so this is not the black woman this is the edomite woman in new zealand this sister she was their nanny in New Zealand. You understand? With my kids, and now it's so sad for me, like to hear that uh, what happened to to them from their mother. So it, my heart is torn apart. A part of mine is gone. I wish I could see them, but now when they when time comes, I won't see them and that thing is tearing me apart i'm such in a trauma whereby i can't like tell anyone what happened because the way i knew lauren lauren was such an awesome person a loving mother you see that thing i want you sisters to really see what's going on here this black woman she is not speaking the fact that this woman murdered her children no no she's an she was such an awesome mother she's complimenting her do you see that do you brothers see this? Yes, That's some evil yeah. stuff. That's some yes, evil sir. stuff right there. Okay? That's some demonic-ish. That's some evil stuff right there. Who cared for her kids? Who doesn't want anything to happen to her kids? Even the father also, they cared for their kids. It was a loving family that when you enter that house, you can even feel that spirit that there is love in this house. They used to uh, take us out touring wherever they go. I was there with the kids and I could see that this family is such a family that cares for their kids. And it was happy for me to be in that house and everything. And my kids used to know those kids and they used to go to, with me to work and play with those kids. Mama, so you see, you see, she's not saying anything evil. Give me the book of Isaiah real quick. Mm -hmm. Give me Isaiah chapter eight. Okay. Isaiah 8 verse 13. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 13. You know what's that of verse 12? The book of Isaiah chapter 8 verse 12. Wait. Say you know what? not. Start of verse 9. Start of verse 9. We're going to read down a little bit. The book of Isaiah chapter 8 verse 9. Associate yourselves, all ye people, mm -hmm. and ye and ye shall be broken in pieces. You see what the Bible is saying? The Bible is telling the black woman, it says, associate yourself, O you black woman, and ye shall be broken in pieces. Remember what we read in Isaiah 32, verse 9, it says, Wait, I says what? Rise up, you women that are at ease. This woman is at ease. She's not saying nothing because it's the white woman, but it's still murder. But she's not saying, she's all saying all the good things. Okay? Ray. And give ear all ye of far countries. Mm -hmm. New Zealand. Gird yourselves and ye shall be broken in pieces. You see what the Bible, the Lord is saying, gird yourself and you shall be broken in pieces. Ray. Gird yourselves and ye shall be broken in pieces. Next verse, come on. Take counsel together and mm -hmm. it shall come to naught. You see what she's doing? She's taking counsel to stand by this white woman that killed her three, her three babies. She's not saying something. She's not being, she's not speaking the truth. You understand? Right? Speak the word and it shall not stand. He says, speak the word and it shall not stand. That's why today on this day, 2021, we are speaking the truth now against what she's saying. Right? For God is with us. For God is with us, O Emmanuel. Go ahead. For the Lord spake thus to me with a strong hand mm -hmm. and instructed me that I should not walk in the way of this people. He say, says, we must not walk in the way of these people. Go ahead. Say ye not a confederate to all them a to whom this people shall say. He says, say ye not a confederacy to all them to whom these people shall say. Meaning the people that the black woman is associating herself with. 
Right? A confederacy. Neither fear ye their fear, nor be afraid. The Lord says, don't be afraid, because the black woman, she is afraid. She wants airtime. Now she's speaking. She's not being honest. She's being disingenuous. Murder was committed here of three kids. Okay. You see, you ever notice white women? No, no, no. I mean, white white people can trust we can trust you with their kids, but they will never trust you with their money. You ever seen that? Yes, sir. Listen, they can go on vacation. They can bring a, a black person, a black woman to come and look after their houses and their children. And they can be gone for a week, two weeks, but they'll never trust you with their money. They can trust you with their kids, not the money. You understand? Think about that thing. Let it sink in in your spirit. Okay? Keep going. Sanctify the Lord of hosts himself mm -hmm. and let him be your fear really? and let him be your dread. You see that thing? So it is about fear. That, but the Lord is saying, he says, we must not be afraid to speak the truth. Okay, that's what we're doing now. All praises to the Most High. Sounds like you're now, you, see, you, you are a family that was so close to you. Tell us, how does it make you feel to know that the same memories that you're so fond of, you may not be able to create um, with these kids again because they're no longer here. Mm. Uh, it's so sad that I'll never see the kids here because mm. I was so close to them, I so attached to them. I used to love them as my kids, mm. but now my heart is broken. I don't know what came to Lauren. I wish if- The devil came to Lauren. Okay. Whenever she was here. And ask her, Lori, what did mm. you see that? Lori, mm? listen, brothers, oh my God, man. The black woman, hey, sisters, you know, we pray for you. Happened to you for you to do this because you struggle to get kids. And when they came, you loved them, you cuddled them every day, you took them to school with love. You show them love. What happened? What went wrong, Lori? What kind of person was Lauren? You, like you, I'm sure you see the media. Mm. Man, watch this. Give me the book of Revelation real quick. Oh, come on. Yeah, this is witchcraft here. Yeah. Okay. Give me Revelation 13 real quick. Revelation chapter 13, verse 5. Mm. The book of Revelations, chapter 13, verse 5. Go ahead. And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue 40 and 2 months. Meaning 350 years. So now what's going, what is going into years is going into the media, his mouth. You see, they use the media to put, to create a painted narrative that suits them. You understand? Because look at our sister now. She's crying. But this woman killed her kids. Now the, the, the news reporter is asking her, what type of woman she is? You see that? What type of woman this lorry woman is? is? Yeah, I can't watch this no more. The hell is this? So, Polly, good afternoon to you. So, what? So, Polly, good now, afternoon to you. This is the next case. This is the last case now. All praise to the most high. Let's play this. What happened in court today? Mm. Well, a very good morning, Jeremy. And what we do know is that this 22 year old was charged with murder. Um, of course, this um, uh, stems from the fact that her boyfriend's body was found under her bed. And so, now here's there's a black woman now. This black woman, she killed this brother and she put him under her bed. Listen, you really, you can't imagine this stuff here, yeah. okay? Told by the prosecutor that her body was, the body of, the, of this man was actually placed under the bed. What we also know now is that he was poisoned and therefore we are told- So she poisoned him. So now the brother's dead. He said, no, I'm gonna hide the body under the bed. 
Who does that? But she was the last person to be in contact with her boyfriend. But far again, going back, is that this the very same um, girl had appeared before court on charges of assault. She was then released on warning. Okay, so she's the violent one. So you brothers, you like these sisters that are violent? No, she's feisty. No, no, she's the devil. Give the sister time to get her mind right. She's not ready for marriage yet. Okay? No, she's not feisty. She's crazy. Okay. And a few days later, the body of her boyfriend was found under the bed and she was arrested. And I see people behind you possibly protesting. Uh, who are they? Well, very good question, Jeremy. And we are going to talk to some of the family members as well. Joining me right now this morning is the brother of um, Dennis, who was found under the bed. And Dennis, of course, this um, comes at a time where we've had a, a crisis in the country of gender-based violence as well. And you know, I'm glad he, he pulled that up. This GBV, gender-based violence. Listen to what this brother says now. Listen. We've been encouraged by the president to try and fight this. How do you feel right now? And do you think that, or rather, are you confident that his will roll this time around? Yeah, uh, as uh, family and friends, we are devastated. But on the other hand, we are strong that uh, this case has got uh, media attention. And uh, we believe that with you guys on our side, the case will be fast tracked. Uh, she has been charged with murder. And the 29th, that we say that uh, she'll come back for bail. We'll come back again. Hope the state will oppose that bail. And uh, we believe in justice. Hope the justice will take its cause. Uh, the president has been fighting, and the whole country actually is fighting gender-based violence. And uh, let her be an example to all other women who think that they can get away with murder. Yeah. Well, well, you notice well, there's no really media attention now on this. Nobody's talking about this. It's just ENCA because, you know, they're the devil. But they're the ones that are reporting this thing. How come Cyril Ramaphosa is not talking about gender-based violence that is committed against the black man by the black woman? How come that thing is not reported? It doesn't get media coverage and attention as the other one does. You notice that? They practice hypocrisy. This woman, she killed this brother in cold blood and put her under the bed. Hmm? Well, just if you can just uh, tell us something here. This 22-year-old girl wanted to tell her side of the story. In fact, she, she didn't want to be represented. Um, it first started as an assault, then murder. We were also told that there was an argument that broke out between the two. Clearly, there was a feud in that relationship. Uh, what is it that you can tell us from there as well? Is there any other story that you know about what had happened before your brother was murdered? Yeah, the, it has been going on because I think she was even served with a protection order. I don't know what happened that they came back together, but she has been a very violent lady. They fought a couple of days before. You see what they are telling them? They say she's violent. She's the violent one. She likes to fight. Okay. For oh, his mother. And uh, he, that was, I think, on Wednesday, yes, on Wednesday night. And then uh, uh, she, she, the, the deceased came to report the case. And then I think she, that is when she was served the protection order. And I, I don't know what happened after that, but then we were called that she poisoned him. And uh, she, she even confessed that she poisoned him. Yeah. We've, we've, of course, seen, just the last question, we've seen the video that went viral where she was um, being uh, victimized and, of course, being accused of murder before she appear, was arrested. Um, what kind of person was your brother, just to give us clarity? He was a humble guy, good, hardworking, very, very humble guy, down to earth, a man with very few words. I think well, that's the reason as to why the woman was abusing him a lot. He was a man with a few words. You see that part right there? You see, you, you listen to what the brother is saying. He says, I think the reason why this woman was abusing this brother is because he was a man of a few words. Watch this. Give me Sarah 25, verse 20. Watch this thing. Okay? Pay attention here. Read what you got. Sarah 25, verse 20. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 25, verse 20. Read. As the climbing up a sandy way is to the feet of the aged. Mm -hmm. So is a wife full of words to a quiet man. You see that part right there? 
is a soul is a wife full of words to a quiet man. Meaning a woman that likes to run her mouth. She's always talking all the time. Yep, 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 yep. You see, men like silence. We like silence. You see, we like, we, we like you. We like you. We like you to, there's one thing that we love to do. We love you to do. Just be quiet. Okay. You know, you understand? We love silence. We love that thing. So what we're reading here is that so is a wife full of words to a quiet man. Because imagine, imagine a, an aged man climbing up a sandy hill. I mean, that's a very, that's a, that's a very difficult process to do because of what? He is aged. You understand? You are climbing up a sandy way. So now you know you're gonna be, you're gonna feel, you're gonna feel heaviness in your joints and all that. He says it's the same thing when you are a quiet man and you have a clamorous woman, meaning she's loud. Give me that in Proverbs 9, verse 13. So this is the type of woman that this brother had. Okay. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 13. Watch this. The book of Proverbs chapter 9, verse 13. Mm -hmm. A foolish woman is clamorous. Mm -hmm. Read. She is simple and knoweth nothing. A foolish woman is clamorous. She's loud. You understand? Obnoxious. She's proud. She's stubborn. You understand? He says she's simple, meaning she's dumb, and knoweth nothing. She don't know nothing. This is what we're reading. This is what's going on here. This is the relationship that the brother is describing that his brother was like. He was quiet. This woman was loud. And even the brother opened the, she, what, she opened a case of assault against this woman. You understand? He couldn't talk a lot. He was very, very quiet. Yeah, that is the man I knew from time, I don't know, a very long time. Yeah. Right, thank you very much, sir. Your pleasure. Thank right. you. Uh, they... Okay, now watch this. Give me the book of Proverbs, okay? Give me Proverbs. Give me Proverbs chapter 6, verse 8. I mean, Proverbs 5, verse 8. Let's read that. Proverbs 5, verse 8. The book of Proverbs, chapter 5, verse 8. Read. Remove thy way far from her, mm -hmm. and come not nigh the door of her house. The Bible is telling us, it says, that type of woman is as removed far from her. Stay away from this type of woman, and come not nigh the door of her house. Read. Lest thou give thine honor unto others. Because guess what? You're going to give your honor unto this woman. Read on. And thy years unto the cruel. Because that, that's cruel what she did. Killed him, poisoned him, and shoved him under the bed. Go ahead. Lest strangers be filled with thy wealth. Now you take the insurance money out of, out of the death now. From the death, the insurance policy now. Go ahead. And thy labors be in the house of a stranger. Mm -hmm. And your labors, all your the fruits of your labors, now they have they've been taken by what? By the by a stranger. Go ahead. And thou mourn at the last. And you're gonna mourn at the last. You see, now the family is mourning because of that. Go ahead. When thy flesh and thy body are consumed. When your flesh and your body are consumed, now the brother is dead. Now. You understand? Give me Proverbs chapter seven verse five. Read that. The book of Proverbs, chapter 7, verse 5. Go ahead. That they may keep thee from a strange woman. Mm -hmm. From the stranger with flattereth with her words. The Bible is commanding us to stay away from a strange woman, a woman that is good with her words. That's what we read in Proverbs 5. It says, her words are what? It says, it says what? For, for the lips of a strange woman drop as a honeycomb, and her mouth is smoother than oil. Jump down to verse 21 now. Proverbs 7, verse 21. Go ahead. The book of Proverbs, chapter 7, verse 21. Read. With much fair speech, she caused him to yield. He caused him to yield, meaning what? She, he fell for the sister. He fell for him. You understand? It says, with, with, with her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. Because what? She's very good with her tongue. Go ahead. With the flattering of her lips, 
she forced him. You see that thing right there? Go ahead. Come on. He goes after her straightway. After she went, after she wet him, after she seduced him, he says what? He says he goes after her straightway. Meaning what? A simp. Go ahead. As an ox goeth to the slaughter. As an ox that goes to be put to death. Right? Or as a fowl to the correction of the stocks. No, no, no. As a what? Or as a fool to the correction of the stocks. Or the fool, meaning a sin to the correction of stocks. Meaning the fool will be corrected by what? By this wicked woman that flatters with her tongue. Go ahead. Till a dart strike through his liver. You see that thing? Death. Poison. Because that seems to be the emos of these women. Go ahead. As a bird hasteth to the snare. Mm -hmm. And knoweth not that it is for his life. Meaning what? It is for your life. Meaning you are not going to return from this. You're going to be put to death. Read on. Hearken unto me now, therefore, O ye children, and attend to the words of my mouth. He says, pay attention to what the Bible is saying and apply it and attend to the words of my mouth. Read. Let not thine heart decline to her ways. Mm -hmm. Go not astray to her paths. So the Lord is saying in her path. Read that right. Read this in the Bible. The book of Proverbs, chapter 7, verse 25. Read. Let not thine heart decline to her ways. Mm -hmm. Go not astray in her paths. The Bible is saying, it says, let not thine heart decline to her ways. Don't let your heart decline to her ways. Meaning what? Don't fall for it in her ways. He says, go not astray in her path. Don't leave the way. Don't leave the way that we read in verse 24. And you understand? And follow her path. Because her path is the path of hell and destruction. Go ahead. For she hath cast down many wounded. Meaning what? She's got a lot of bodies on her. You understand? Read. Yea, many strong men have been slain by her. Many strong men have been slain by her. You know what that translates, that translates to today? It's talking about these physically strong men, but mentally weak. That, that, the beta males. Because the beta males are led by alpha females. So that's what you are seeing. Says, For she cut down many wounded women that be carrying women, men that be carrying women's handbags. Yea, many strong men have been slain by her. Go ahead. Her house is the way to hell. Her house is the way to hell. Really? Going down to the chambers of death. Hmm. You can't, you listen, this is some heavy stuff. And that's exactly what happened to the brother. You understand? Now our brother is put to death here by this woman. Now watch this. Let's see the confrontation because they talked about the confrontation. Watch this. So Jeremy, I'm um, saying the family, they're saying the... The confrontation. Watch this. This is here now. That's the brother right there. You see now the bed is standing now. The brother that was found under the bed. Okay, that's the brother right there. What happened? You are sitting there crying, crying, crying. What happened? You have to tell us what happened. Tell us what happened. No, 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 no. no. Yeah. What happened? Oh, I have to tell you rubbish now. What you happened? Said tell us what happened, you idiot. <laughs> this is not a laughing matter, but you see how they, they are mad as hell now. You understand? She's standing there. It's like nothing going on. You see that? I tell you, these women, you brothers, you better be very awake from this day forth. Don't be sleeping up in here. What happened? Shut up! Shut up! What happened? Are you dead? Are you dead? Are you dead? Are you dead? Tell us 
What happened? Yes. Yes. Look at this card. You are like this. Look at you. You. A person losing life for you. You. You are a person losing life for you. I can touch you. I can touch you. I can touch you. I can touch you. Thank you so much. You are in vain. You see, he's dead. You see, he's dead. Do you know that this is my husband? Fuck off. Do you know why he's dead? So she thinks that the, the reason why they are upset is because she's from South Africa, they are from Uganda, you can't make this stuff up. You see, the black woman, she does not take accountability for nothing. The, the man is dead. What does that have to do with where you come from? Hmm? So basically, according to this sister, if, let's say, this brother was a South African, let's say, quote-unquote, because we're not South Africans, we're Israelites. If this brother was a so quote unquote South African, so the family members were not going to be shouting like this. Right? That's what she's saying. Because that's the logic. Like she's very, mm -hmm, she's very hot. I get they say they open an assault case against him. This brother did that. Three days ago, we know everything. That man came when we were seated there. He came to do what? He came here to do what? He do what? He came here to do what? That man came here to do what? That man is from Barabastad. Okay, he came here to do what? Tell us, he came here to do what? He was here to collect. So okay, me I'm not fighting. What happened? Tell me what happened. Why are you killing? No, don't ask that question. We are asking what I happened. Never killed him. Okay, you never killed him. But what happened? That's what I can swear. Who killed him? Tell us who killed him. Who killed him? Tell us who killed him. Tell us who okay. killed him. Okay, what about the fight? No, 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 no. Okay. no, no, no. Yeah. Let me ask you the question. I'm just asking. Why you went to Waka today? What is Dennis? When you know he's in the house? Lucky. You are sleeping together in the house. No. Where, where do you, where, where you went to work? Where, 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 where you went to work today? You opened his shop. Where you went to work? Where was Dennis? Okay, let's Point listen. Point of correction. Huh? Yes. Don't say his shop, just say our shop. Okay, okay. Today I came okay. to your shop, okay. You came to I came work to your shop. Remember me, I asked you myself, I asked you, where is your husband? You said he's around. No, what type? No, it was not me. Maybe it was the worker. I never saw you. You My think friend. this one is your crazy? What, what time did you come? Uh, at 12, uh, half past 12, I think. I came there, you told me the Dennis is not here, but he's around. From your own mouth. Did you tell me that? Yesterday I came, you saw me yesterday. I came there, you were sitting there, inside, and then the dance was outside. And then I asked you, eh? I asked you still, why are you fighting? Hey, tell us the truth, what happened to the dance? Tell us the truth. Okay, go through all, yes. Yes. What happened? What happened to you? Okay, fine. I don't know. <laughs> but you live, by the time you live here, the plan is for Linda. This is plan is Linda. Oh, Linda. By the time you left, Linda. By the time you left here, was he dead or not? No, but that question, you can go and check on the cameras. No, I'm asking you. Because, yes. Uh -huh. 
What happened? In the morning, what happened? The both of us, we went out. Uh -huh. well, most of the time, I, I, I stay behind mm. when he doesn't have people in the office. Yes. He said, no, I have things to do in the office. I understand. Get Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, go to the office. You call that girl and open, and then around 12, before you notice, I will be there. Mm. Even when I reach there, I, I just open, I leave that girl there. I, 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 I went to, to see my friends. Mm. That's what I did. Mm. Mm. So I'm past four. Mm. This other one came. He said, ah, ah, where is Benny? I said, no, that is Benny. Call him. He said, no, I'm calling. He's not picking. Mm. Okay, I'm also calling. Not okay, what is your phone? I don't know. Someone did it here. Why is why why is the bed turned upside down? Why was he down the bed? Was he under the bed or was on top of the bed? I don't know. Okay. You don't, you don't stay I here. want to ask you a question. You don't stay here. The time my paper came to say, let us go with the inside. Yeah. They found you when you were pushing the body under the bed. Why? Hmm. They found the sister pushing the body under the bed. Because she's, she, I mean, you see, she's making all sorts of, sorts of noise, right? But what we, the video we just watched, she's been what? She's been found guilty. You understand? She's been charged, she's charged with murder of this brother. Our brother Dennis from Uganda. You understand? I tell you, these are things that nobody wants to talk about. Nobody wants to hold the black woman accountable because why? She is at ease. That's why she's at ease. She's been too relaxed. The black man is has been held accountable from the moment the Bantu migration happened, 70 AD happened. We've been held accountable since that time until this day. The black woman has never been put on blast. You understand? Why are you closing the door when the people are asking you why are you closing the door? Could you give me that in uh, 27 verse 15? Read that for me. Ecclesiasticus chapter 27 verse 15. Read. The strife of the proud is bloodshedding. That's what you are seeing here. The strife of the proud. This woman is proud. It says that behavior is bloodshedding. It's like killing. Right? It's like it's murder. Go ahead. And their revilings are grievous to the ear. And their revilings are grievous to the ear. Meaning what? Be just be running their mouth. He says it's grievous to the ear. Because right now it's grievous to my ear. Okay. Read again, verse 15. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 27, verse 15. Read. The strife of the proud is bloodshedding, mm -hmm. and their revelings are grievous to the ear. Jump down to verse 18. Verse 18. For as a man hath destroyed his enemy, mm -hmm. so hath thou lost the love of thy neighbor. So now he is now he goes now it's like now this brother is like he was an enemy to this sister. Now he says, So has thou lost the love of thy neighbor. Now he's lost the love of a, a, of a neighbor. He lost that now. Because of what? Evil behavior, evil intent. Why would you hide the body under the bed if you didn't do nothing? Because that's an admission of guilt. Why would you do that? I agree if you know you didn't do nothing, just call the police immediately and say, we have a problem here. But she did not do that. She took the body and hid it under the bed. To what end? What was the plan here? You understand? Ostrich, the Lord says she be, you deprived her of what? Of wisdom. And that's what you are seeing. Okay? Our people is back down here. Okay? Jump down to the stage. Read that. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 27, verse 30. Read. Malice and wrath, even these are abominations. Go ahead. And, and the sinful man shall have them both. The sinful woman will have malice and wrath, meaning malicious intent and anger, rage. 
You understand? Malice and red. Give me that in First Peter 2 verse 1. Okay, First Peter chapter 2 verse 1. Read that. First, first book of Peter, chapter 2, verse 1. Go ahead. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and mm -hmm. all guile. You see that thing? Hypocrisy. Lay, therefore, laying aside all malice, that's what we read in Corinthians 11, verse 30. Malice and red, even these are abomination. So the, the apostle Peter is repeating the same thing here. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile. Okay. We don't bitterness, go ahead. And hypocrisies. Hypocrisy, that's what we see. We, we, go ahead. And envies. And envy, because the root of envy is, is what? Hatred, which is what? Murder. Go ahead. And evil speakings. And all evil speakings. We don't. As newborn babes mm -hmm. desired the sincere milk of the word. That he may grow thereby. That's what we want our brothers and sisters to do. To get rid of the malice, the guile, the hypocrisy, the envies, and the evil speakings, and what they must desire, the sincere milk of the word. Keeping of God's commandments in the faith of his son, the Christ. You said that I came out of breast. Why are you saying I was okay. uh, uh, sorry, 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 sorry. When did you realize when did you realize that he was unconscious or whatever? That whatever did. Okay, one hour ago. Hmm, one hour. I mean, how do you wait for that long if you really love the brother? Immediately when you see it, call the ambulance or the police. She did not. She just waited there for one hour and shoved the body under the bed. You can't make this stuff up. Now, okay, give me the book of, um, go back to Sarah 25, verse 19. Full circle now. Sarah 25, verse 19. Let's read that. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 25, verse 19. Go ahead. All wickedness is but little to the wickedness of a woman. He says, All wickedness is little compared to the wickedness of a woman. Jump down to verse 24. Verse 24. Mm -hmm. Of the woman came the beginning of sin. Read. And through her we all die. And through her we all die. That's what the Bible is saying as it is written this day. Okay, I'm going to end the class right here. All praise to the Most High. Let's break bread in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Okay, for dying for the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel, that you also may have life. First book of Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death Till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.